Oh, oh. Yeah. 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 Hello, everybody. Welcome to a brand new episode of High Rollers D and D. I am your dungeon master, Mark Sherlock Hume. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I'm joined by my friends. Beginning on this side, we have Rihanna. Hello. She's back. I'm back from the dead. We have Chris Trotz. We have Kim Richards. On the other side, we have Thomas Hazel and Katie Morrison. This is where, like, if it was like a, a like a British like uh, panel show, they'd all be there, like, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> tequila, spin <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, quite a few things to mention before we get into the episode tonight. Um, so there's a few things we've got to rattle through. The first of which is today's episode of High Rollers is sponsored Woo! Yeah. by Roll and Play Press and their book, One oh. Shot Wonders. Oh, Ooh. look at that shiny gold. Ooh. Uh, one Shot Wonders, in fact, I'm going to pass this over uh, to Rhiannon if you want to just hold this up and show people the inside um, as I'm showing that off. Book. One Shot Wonders is a gorgeous book that contains good. quite literally over 100 adventures. Oh. Uh, but the book does this cleverly to fit in so many adventures. Horses. Each one is broken down in a one or two page session plan that provides you only the essential information that you need to actually run the game. That smells really good. No unnecessary <laughs> description boxes or unnecessary text to pour over. You're flicking those pages oh so God. quick. So good. Because there's so many adventures in there, Chris Trot. Go, go, uh, go. This is an excellent tool to help you with your prep time and get you running a game as quickly as possible and formatted in a much easier way to read as well. Uh, Roll and Play have a Kickstarter running right now from for their map library, which contains gorgeous A2 maps for all the adventures, and we'll be taking a look at that during the break. Oh. Uh, so stick around for that. Um, and then finally, you can use code Althea10, A L T H E Y A. 10? That's how you spell it. Mm, okay. Before the That's end of February to get 10% off at rollandplaypress.com forward slash wonders. It's down there. Uh, that is use code <laughs> Althea10 before the end of February to get 10% off at rollandplaypress.com dot com forward slash wonders. You can check out One Shot Wonders book. I, I am haunting. That is, that is, that is really official, mean. official. I hate that. Don't do that ever again. I love it. Official read through done. I want to say I've known the Roll and Play Press uh, team for a while now. I've seen them at conventions. They are genuinely lovely people. They're a genuinely lovely team. Please go and check out this. I think One Shot Wonders is a great book. I actually really like the formatting really as like well. Quality print. It yeah. gives you just the right information you need. It's it's you know Around it's 10. just enough to get stuff done. And like I said, we will be taking a look at their map library. I'll give you a sneak peek of the ginormous box that oh it comes God. in. Whoa. We'll be taking a look at that during the break. Anything with um, gold on it. So that is it. Thank you so much, Roll and Play Press, for sponsoring this episode. Thank you. Uh, you'll be hearing Thank more you. about them in a little bit. If you're um, watching on Twitch, there are links in Twitch chat right now that you can click on. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, YouTube Live, there should be links uh, in the chat. If you're watching YouTube VOD, there's a link in the video description. If if you can't find that, go to our social media. There will be links on the social media. Yep. Thank you very much. It will much. be impossible for you to not find impossible them. Impossible. Mm. And please go and support them because they are genuinely a really lovely team Amazing. based here in the UK humans. as well. Very good people. Uh, yeah. Also, that's not that's not all, folks. What? Whoa! Uh, more. Also. We are super excited to announce that we will be returning to Insomnia Gaming Festival yeah. for Insomnia yeah. 72. 70, yes. Insomnia 72, it's going to be on Saturday, March 30th at the Birmingham New NEC. Uh, we will yeah. be there on the Saturday only to do a meet and greet session as well as a special live show. Yeah. Uh, Insomnia has always been a great event and we're very excited to be part of Insomnia 22. We had a great time there in the past. We actually did a live show at Insomnia back in our very first campaign, in the Lightfall campaign. Mm. We're very excited to go back and we're very excited to see what wonders they do for us on the stage and things like that as well. So if you'd like to come and meet us, get us to sign something, see the live show, please make sure you come along. That is March 30th at the Birmingham NEC for Insomnia 72. Tickets and more information will be coming soon. Keep your peepers <laughs> peeled uh, and follow us uh, and Insomnia on social media for all the ticket links and more information as well. And also, if you meet Tom, he can do this. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's going to get clipped into some sort of animated uh, game. Look at his brow. He looks like a ghoul. Oh, he does. Oh, no. I've seen it now. All right. <laughs> Well, whilst, whilst we have the camera on Tom, and to stop him doing this, Tom, you wanted to say something about uh, po about podcasts and, and such things. Yes, I did, Mark. Hey, uh, if you like High Rollers and you want to support High Rollers, the best place to do that is everywhere, actually. Uh, Twitch subs, Patreon, YouTube members, incredible places to support us, and you will get access to... Uh, early access to the VODs and the per second part of the podcast episodes. Join the Discord and you'll get access to all of those. That's rad. Also, since the last time we mentioned it, uh, we had a push for iTunes reviews and we had tons, loads and loads Yay. and loads of them. Tons. Thank you. And uh, I read all of them and you are all very, very kind. Five stars across the board, which Ooh. is amazing. So and it you, helps us, right? It helps, it helps push us. the podcast. It pushes us up the charts, makes high rollers more legit to quit. So if you've got, if you've got a spare moment, go and leave us a lovely little review. If you're enjoying the podcast, give it a review. Five stars or otherwise. Five stars, though, is good. Thank you very much. Sam, if we can cut across to Mr. Trot, because he's got an announcement about music. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple things about music. First of all, thank you so much, Jolene. Oh, Jolene. We've done some music for Ash and Rest. Listen mm. to that. Ooh. You'll hear new it music right now. Get your peeps out. When we start, of course. And also, big thanks to Monument Studios, who have provided us with a huge catalogue of music that we're infusing into uh, our entire campaign. You can check them out, and Jolene, of course, using the link that has been provided right now. Oh, lovely. Lovely new music. We always love to see that. Um, and then lastly, just a very happy Lunar New Year to everybody. Uh, Side on Friday. Oh, I can't remember. It's gone blank. I literally had the, the phrase the in my head. card in front of you. I haven't opened it yeah, yet. Opened it yet. I'm saving okay. it exists to both of us. Katie, take it away. Oh, I know. I can't say it very well. <laughs> Tim, you say, you say it beautifully. You say I, I don't say it anywhere near correctly. Go see There you go. I, I literally, I had it planned and I just blanked. Like, I knew it and I just my brain blanked on what it was. Wait, did uh, you say that was last thing? Of the no, no, no. It's yeah. not the last thing, though. Because, Why? Um, oh, yesterday it was your birthday. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, 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 birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Right, that's very lovely. Birthday. The best birth <laughs> the best birthday gift you could give me is a game of D D, which we're gonna do now. Hey! Run that intro for us, Samuel, please. Let's pay for it. Welcome to Althea the Dragon Empire. With a day still to go before their public audience with Duke Ignarius, the draconic noble who rules over the lands of Northvale, our party of heroes investigated a local bounty board for some potential ways to assist the town of Ashen's Rest. Plucking two interesting looking opportunities from the board, they then visited the headquarters of the Stonemasons Guild and visited a supposed oracle or seer blessed with divine powers by the Dragon Empress herself. Though most showed skepticism in her abilities, except of course for Rowan, the oracle seemed to be expecting them. She was revealed to be a young, beautiful dwarven woman by the name of Kiva, who used fortunes to read a deck of cards inspired by the Empress and her founding of the city of Kel. Scaris. Her readings for each of the heroes presented seemed to bring somewhat true for each of them, and some chose to pick a card that they felt drawn to, resulting in strange magical blessings being granted. After visiting Kiva, the party then headed to the impressive 
tower building called the Pharos, headquarters of the Lamplighters Guild, where they inquired about a potential bit of mercenary work. They met with an agent of the guild who revealed the opportunity to be bodyguards for one of their artificers, repairing Everlights in a rough district that the guild had had problems with in the past. And that is where we pick up things this week. But before we do anything, because we forgot last week, but oh. I suspect they all matter this week, it is time to see what is held in the crucible of fate. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for uh, It was dramatic uh, pausing. Uh, I was pausing for dramatic effect. D6, yes? It is a D6 each, please. Oh, no, no results. No, 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 no. On a one, two, three, I will gain a dice in yes. my half of the crucible. On a four, five, or six, you shall gain a dice in your half of the crucible. I'm slowly emptying my dice tray, so I'm killing for time. Empty that sack real quick. Hey, slowly everyone. shall the crucible of fate be revealed. <laughs> I mean, it's fate. It takes its time, it right? It takes its time. All right. Uh, Katie. Failure! A uh, dice for me! Would you get that, too? They need it for the dice stats. Four. A dice for you! Four. A dice for you! <laughs> Two. A dice for me! So far. Five. Oh. A oh. dice for you! And then finally, for I too am a participant in the Crucible of Fate. A two. A dice a for dice you. A dice for me. <laughs> it is an even 3-3 three, three split three, three. today. Okay, okay. Luck so. is on no one's side. So I'm going to, unfortunately, we still don't have our trays yet, but soon, and then I'll be able to place them here. But yes, that is uh, three and three. Um, okay, okay. So the, the matter of fate is in balance right now. Ooh. Uh, and yeah, we find ourselves. So I believe that yeah, the all of the gang except Ophelia had gone to the Lamplighters Guild, and I think that's pretty much where we wrap things up with you guys leaving the Lamplighters Guild um, and Ophelia uh, enjoying a lovely time just back at the Grumpy Hog Tavern, just having drinks and food and relaxing, resting. Um, yeah. I did mention this. I mentioned this while you weren't there last week, mm -hmm. uh, but because you stayed in a more comfortable establishment uh, of a, you know, it costs you more money. Uh, you do begin the day with inspiration, Ophelia, so you have inspiration, which is going to be a re-roll for us. It's going to be a, you can just re-roll any d20. Um, uh, you also do, would Ophelia have purchased a, a room for another night, uh, is the question. Yes. Okay, so it would be 20 gold, another 20 Perfect. gold, uh, for another room for the next night as well. Uh, but that means that your accommodations are all secured, um, everything is in place. Nice. Um, and it is probably about sort of midday-ish, just after midday. Um, yeah, I'm trying to recall, last time, did we, before we uh, left our readings and mm -hmm. went to the Lamplighters Guild, did we go to Ophelia to say, hey, Ophelia, I don't think you gotta go check this out. Well, I don't believe you yet. did. No, okay. I think because it was a case of yeah, Ree wasn't here, and we, we were just, just like we're just gonna tower. go straight over. Just the tower. Now we're at the left the tower. Yeah. Mm, okay. The only other thing was we asked if Percival would be up for some queuing. Yeah, he's um, queuing. Because yeah. like, because there's yeah. long. But that that wouldn't be until like, yeah. this evening anyway. Yeah. yeah. So. Just a reason. Or like the wee hours evening. of the morning. Yes. You said yes, by the way. You said yes. We were like, yes, it's okay. No jeans. He's back. He's standing. Um. You were also informed by uh, Alicia, who was the agent that you met at the Lamplighters Guild, Alicia uh, Tefio, uh, that the engineer, or in this case, the, they're called an illuminator, um, the, the artificers of the Lamplighters Guild, uh, the, an illuminator would be coming to meet you at uh, the Clever Toad um, at sundown, basically. Um, yes. Okay. Um, cool. And we agree to this. We're, we're all happy with this job, right? All yeah. happy to do it? Yeah. Uh, you seem to be, yeah. I think yeah. it was, I, I, I expressed that it was, yeah, 200 <laughs> gold per, per Everlight that is is fixed. That's good money. That's good money. That is good money. That's good that money. That is good That's money. Good. <laughs> Money. Sorry, we both went deep into that. <laughs> Me more than drop, maybe, but um, yeah. There's there, there are three of these ever lights. They're called these kind of like lamp posts, these magical street lights that need to be fixed. Um, and you will get two hundred gold for each one that is correctly repaired. Nice. Um, and also, there was a, a kind of talk of like if say the majority of these lights were fixed, um, that the Lamplighters Guild would think of you very favorably in this queuing for the Duke's... Uh, That's nice. Uh, yeah, just in case okay. Percival doesn't quite work out, I suppose. Um, oh, we also were asked for a team name, a mercenary guild 
Like it, it was mentioned that yes, if you were going to continue to become kind of perform mercenary work, a, a a a group name is generally if you're going to act as one sort of unit rather than individuals, then it would be advisable that you have some sort of moniker or uh, sigil or some such that you would be able to go by. <laughs> Just all gruff in the kids. <laughs> are we all? Are we all? Uh, one, are you heading one lion you? dad and the kids. Yeah. <laughs> Percy and the fleshies. <laughs> <laughs> Should we head back to Ophelia as well? Yeah, while let's we're doing this. Sure, pick up. You guys so make your way back. What do you think about Team Xanthius? No? Okay. Um, Xanthius and the gang. Friends. Oh, I like that one. You like it? Yes. Xanthius and the gang? I like the no. one before. No, you don't like that? What do you think? Well, I, I don't think we should have any of our names in it. I think it should just but be. The Easy a new Squad. Name. No, I think it should be a new name. Okay. For all of us. Um, okay. The best friends. Well, it's not very intimidating, I suppose. Mercenary companies tend to have a Besties. almost a scary name, you know, like a you should hire us because we're dangerous. The pebbles. The peb well, the rocks. The rocks. rocks are more dangerous than pebbles. Sharper, maybe. Um Flint. I don't know. What should we call ourselves? I Ophelia will know. Let's go tell Ophelia about this job we have. Yes. I hope she agrees. It's kind of hinged on that. It is work. Oh, that's true. We'll have to to describe it as not work, maybe. Helping people. Helping people. Community relationships. Yeah. Yeah, you guys make your way back, um, kind of winding your way. You, you're following like these two main streets that run through uh, Ash and Rest that you kind of surround the plaza. You're kind of following these main, quite wide streets. Um, it is a pleasant enough day. Uh, there is a, a kind of a light wind, uh, kind of a spring breeze kind of blowing through, but it's fairly, you know, sunny, a little bit overcast. Um, and you make your way back to the Grumpy Hog Tavern, uh, where you know Ophelia was where you left her. Um, and stepping inside, you can see still in the same booth, uh, that one booth that has been locked down now as Ophelia's little little place that she goes. Everyone too afraid to disturb her um, and leave her to it. Um, Do you have your sunglasses on? All the time. Yeah, okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. A little round, sort of with the wraparound sections at the side. Just set right, it's, it's by the front entrance, it's like a bay window with a booth, so she can see everything that's going out on the plaza. Clearly, like, one of the best spots in this whole tavern, because it's got these beautiful views of the town. Um, gorgeous, plush red, uh, like, cushion seating, fine, you know, dark wood table, you know, round table that you can sit at. Just kind of sprawled, I imagine, sort of arm up on the yeah. back of the chair, sunglasses on, glass of wine. Percival just sat there neatly, just looking like... You know, a picture of uh, of the good life. You a know. lady of leisure. Mm, a lady of leisure, indeed. Um, yeah. yeah. Enjoying yourself, Ophelia? Oh, repenting is such bliss. <laughs> it looks good. You look comfortable. It's very good. Have you been here all morning? Yes. Oh, okay. I thought you might be traveling the city, having an explore, you know? There's plenty to see here. There's plenty of interesting Ooh, what things. What have you seen? Going... Anything good? Well, I saw a gentleman walk through. I saw another a lovely lady walk through, and then there was a little doggy. Oh, a little doggy just came scampering through. He was wonderful. Some people come in, Go in and out, and in then and out, out again. Yes, it's that's fun. thrilling. <laughs> they look delicious. Excuse me. Okay, there it is. There it is. Yep. Um, we. Uh, I'll turn to the others. I was about to say job. I was about we to say we found a job. We don't have a job. We have a mission. A quest. A diplomatic mission. People want help. Our help. Okay. To what end? We, there are, remember the Lamplighters Guild? Mm -hmm. The people to go around town lighting up the lights at night? There aren't enough of them? There were so many of them. Oh, there were. There are plenty. However, three of their uh, lamps are out of commission. Not for us to repair. We are simply tasked to follow them, guard them as they repair these lamps. So like bodyguard work? Not bodyguard work, more bodyguard leisure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, is it paying at yes, least? Yes, it is. 200 per lamp that is repaired. Uh, yes, exactly. And we're getting our name in there with the Lamplighters Guild, which is... Diplomatic. Yes. 
understandable, yes, our diplomatic is good, and I'm racking up a lot of repenting time. Is that... Re what are the boundaries on work? It is things that I wouldn't want to do myself. Mm. You know, th things that I would send Percival to do, for example, or, you know, something that would be more befitting of an undead rather than... I see. Ophelia, could you roll a d20? At, uh, make, it, make it a... I'll let you pick either insight or survival. <laughs> Don't matter. Nine insight. Nine insight. Um, you won't think too much of this, but the, there is maybe like one thing, and you're kind of umming and ahhing like work, oh, bodyguarding. Normally, that's reserved for undead and things like that. But two things: one, that hunger in you mm. that has not been sated. If you were to get into a fight, that would provide you an opportunity to perhaps feed upon someone mm -hmm. uh, without perhaps rising too much suspicion. Um, but also, these guilds, this Lamplighters Guild, you've seen them about. They seem to be quite an important part of the town. And it would be somewhat similar to the different parts of the sects and the houses at back in Osseus, the sects. Uh, yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. -E Not that immature. Yes. <laughs> um, that gaining influence with you them... Sex. And having influence <laughs> with the Duke could be very beneficial to your greater plans. Um, so it does maybe something that kind of draws upon your fight. Mm. Whether that's whether that's something Ophelia cares about is yeah. up to you, but just uh, things that might become clear to you. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, this seems like a very ample opportunity. Mm -hmm. I shall join you. Good. I was really hoping you would. I don't know how dangerous this might be, but I kind of sold it as a group of five would be joining this mission. So, oh, it's kind of you to think of me in that way. Thank you. Also, mm -hmm. how do you feel about your future? In regards to what? Knowing it. Oh, yes. Yes. We all, um, we went to... The Coil of the Empress. Coil of the Empress. And we Thank spoke you. with Kiva. Who is... He's got such a good memory. Who is Kiva? What, what, An oracle. What they do? An oracle. oracle. Interesting. And they gave us, everyone can agree, mm -hmm. up there with Clever Toad. Really? <laughs> That's very high praise, Rowan. I know. Really? I suppose I can agree with that statement, yes. yes. It's, it aligned well. Um, <laughs> now, when we arrived, uh, Kiva requested our presence Specifically, which has apparently has never happened before. Interesting. And uh, they, they were expecting you. Okay. They knew of you, your visual appearance. Oh. Well, any reason to predetermine or well, to find out what path is laid out for me, I will accept. Gladly. It'll be fun. Sounds like fun. Good. Should we go there now? Well, we have to wait until oh, yes. sundown yeah. anyway, so. Clever toe. Wait, hey, I, I'm also going to remind you that some of you did express an interest in acquiring some nice clothing for the Duke's order. We also Ruff need to go not. shopping. <gasps> oh, we're going shopping! We do have time spare until we have to meet yes. these. Well, we should have started there! Really? Well. Wonderful. So, I was thinking, while we're looking, uh, heading towards the Coil of the Empress, mm -hmm. how about we scout out some good shops? Yes. By the Great Father, yes! I knew we were on the same page on this one. Lovely. Let's go. Okay. So as the group of you, you make your way back down to the Coil of the Empress. On the way there, you notice that around the plaza, there are clothing shops. There are places that you can go, but none of them are... None of them stand out. Fancy. You can buy clothing here, but it would be standard clothing. You're not going to be able to buy any fine clothing. Uh, in this area, like looking right through the windows, just mm, yeah, mm, it's 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 not quite, you know the, no, it's, not, it's high street, you know, it's Primark, it, it's, Primark, it's H and M, it's kind of you know nice, but it's not fancy. Mm -hmm. um, Feel this, a thin, very thin. Yeah. It looks all right. It's crumbling to me. in my hands. Oh, it looks all right to me. 
put it back. I read you that. <laughs> would find out, uh, maybe somewhere to visit later, but at point da, 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 21, which is up in the Duskrise district, uh, the map is. Get that map over. Yeah, I'll pass it over to. To write on. Point 21, which is up in Duskrise, um, near the cathedral, um, is a place that is called, it's just called Mystique. Oh, oh, Mystique. And you learn about that from like the locals, like you kind of like ask around, you know, you kind of pass, you see that these shops, it's not like what you're looking for. Is there anywhere else in town that we can get some clothing? Oh yes, you must simply go up to Mystique's. Uh, they are the best tailor in Ash and Rest. They attend to all of the, the Duke's courtiers. They attend to the highest members of the guilds. Like they are the, the most um, prominent tailor in the town. The people that are talking to us, what are their clothes like? Now. Huh? What are their clothes like, the people talking to us? I mean, the people that you're talking to, like, it's a mixture of people, right? You right. see some folks who are just locals, you maybe talk to some of the tailors here in the town, and they're, they're, they're like general stores. They're not really tailors, they're just providing mass-produced stuff, like, for the general public. Um, and But this is your... Just imagining, like, did Mystique make these clothes? No. No, they didn't. <laughs> We're going to Mystique then. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you guys can figure that out as you're on your way. And then you arrive at the coil uh, of the Empress. Um, for Rhiannon's benefit, and for those of you who maybe weren't here last week as well, uh, listening in, uh, the Coil of the Empress is a beautiful stone tower uh, that rises up in a spiral-like design. You can actually see that the stairs on the outside kind of go around and you can actually catch glimpses of these great spiraling stairs going up. It's engraved with motifs of dragons um, and it is even inlaid with crystal gems that project like faint magical illusions of a dragon coiled around the tower and, uh, and of course of the dragon empress herself uh, kind of emblazoned everywhere. Um, when you make your way there, you can see that this is clearly the headquarters of the Stonemasons Guild. There are many people there doing trade and business, but there are also these acolytes wearing the kind of like purple smocks and, and uh, tabards and things like that emblazoned with a silver flame. Um, and this is, uh, uh, you know, for Ophelia, I guess you would know what this is, but they have the manner that you would recognize of a priest or or priestess or an acolyte or a sermon, a preacher. Um, and they are giving out like little pamphlets and little kind of pieces of parchment to people that talk about something called the Imperial Flame. Um, and saying that the you know these pa these pamphlets and these parchments talk about how the Dragon Empress isn't gone, she's still here with us, that she can guide you if you listen, that the Scions are not the only powers and things like that. Um, and you see that they, so two of them at least avoid Gruff's eye, um, but they kind of nod politely to Rowan as if they've they've met them before. Um, and one of them, the same acolyte that met you guys before and took you up, sees you return with Ophelia and will say, oh, is this the, the Lady of Death that, uh, that Kiva mentioned? <laughs> uh, I'm flattered. <laughs> Lady of Death, you well, called me. Uh, Akiva, our oracle, she had a dream and she saw uh, your companions and she described a woman who was bound to death and that <gasps> death followed her. Oh, I should be so lucky. Oh, well, <laughs> uh, if you would, our mistress would love to speak with you. It is voluntary, it is optional. She, she simply wishes to give you a reading if you would care for one. Oh, she's already in my good graces, so... Oh, well, please, let me let me take you upstairs. Thank would, you. would you like to wait outside as you did with each other or, or are you happy to remain down here or...? I want to wait outside. Oh, of course, you'd be more than welcome. To... Wait, mm -hmm. there's no good clothes shops around here, is there? Uh, well, there are many stores that sell clothing. Um, mm, good clothing shops. I've heard of a place up in Duskrise District. Mystique, yeah. yes, we've been told. Yes, I've yes. heard that. that I, I'm a simple, humble man. I do not uh, dress extravagantly, but I've heard that many others who like to spend their coin go that way, yes. Waiting room, then. Oh, very good. Uh, they'll take you upstairs, and you are led up all the way to the top of the tower, several flights of stairs up. Um, when you get there, you see that uh, in the top of the tower, almost like a penthouse, there is this room with a heavy door kind of blocking it with comfortable seats and chairs and things like that. Um, and the acolyte leads you on your own, Ophelia, to the doors and says, oh, Lady Ke Mistress Kiva waits inside. Uh, your companions will remain out here. Okay. Um, but if you would head inside, and they open the doors um, and you step inside. You see a gorgeous chamber, uh, black kind of silk curtains um, kind of draped around almost in a circular shape with a single stone table or plinth in the middle. Um, you see that the black fabric that forms around the room is dotted with gemstones that almost form the outline of a city. Uh, this beautiful kind of circular made from you know silver crystals uh, forming the outline of a great city. Not Ashen's Rest, but something far greater than that. Um, the table uh, has a 3D model 
of Kelscaris, this stone city uh, that's laid before it. And you see set behind it is a dwarven woman, young and beautiful, with ash blonde hair, wearing white ceremonial robes um, that cover like the tops of her arms and sort of drape around her elbows. Um, and she has a white veil that covers the lower half of her face. Um, and when she sees you, uh, she sm- you can see her eyes light up um, and uh, you hear this kind of very soft, melodic voice uh, speak out to you. You have come. I was hoping that we would get a chance to speak. The Lady Kiva, I presume. Oh, not uh, just Kiva. Just Kiva. Uh, I, I am an oracle. I, I am not a noble or any such thing, but I have been blessed uh, with guidance, and I would like to share that gift with you, if I can. I, I dreamed of you and your companions, and when they came to the tower, I, I knew that I was meant to give you a reading. Well, I'd be delighted to take part. Please, come, sit. And she gestures, and you watch as that 3D model in the table sinks into the stone plinth to create a flat surface. Wow. And as she does, she brings out a deck of cards and displays them out on the table like this. And then she picks them up and begins to shuffle them as she speaks to you. Have you visited the city of Kelskaris? For I do not believe you are of these lands. No, I have not. It is a great city. The first city. The first city of the Draconic Empire. The Dragon Empress herself laid and sketched out the plans. And there is something in planning a city, laying its foundations, mapping out its streets. There is something magical about that. It creates a path, a guidance. And through that, some of us, acolytes, dwarves mainly, for dwarves were the first stonemasons of Kelskaris, we created this, a deck of cards we call the Citadel. And it helps us not tell the future, as some believe that we can, but to guide and to help people understand who they are and maybe help them decide where they are going. If you may, I would like to draw this for you as well. Yes, of course, go ahead. Very well. Is there anything that you are particularly concerned about? Anything that worries you? Is there a question about your future or your present or even your past that you would like to have answered? Ophelia will just sit very, like, she doesn't want, she doesn't want to give up, but she wants to give off the presence that she knows, mm-hmm. like she feels like she knows what's ahead of her when mm-hmm. she kind of doesn't. So she kind of puts up a bit of a front. Mm-hmm. Um, oh no, my path is already decided for me uh, by my predecessors. I, I, have, a, I have a rank. That I must rise up upon. So I feel as if I may already know. Well, I hope so. And perhaps my guidance will simply be an assurance that you are on the right path then. Mm. She draws the first card, places it in front of you. The Hound. Mm. This card speaks of loyalty, chains to people or places, and promises. This tells me that you or someone you are close to, someone important to you, there are bonds there, deals that were made, promises, chains of loyalty that were forged long ago and perhaps not so long ago, perhaps made by parents or a mentor or perhaps even forged by yourself with such a person. And these chains this hound is important shows you that whatever you are connected to is of great significance but it also means that it came at great cost she places that down in front of you she draws the next card the reversed fate the fate is a card about accepting help and seeking guidance But in its reversed position, this can mean that you may have received advice or been given mentorship that has led you astray or has deceived you in some way. And that you might be reluctant to seek guidance or counsel when it is perhaps what you need most place that down in front of you as well. Final card. Oh. 
How interesting. Is the walker. The walker represents a journey through the unknown, a place that is unfamiliar to you and represents opportunity, represents an unforeseen future. Strange that you are so confident about yours, but yet this card should be revealed. The walker can symbolize an openness to new ideas, new things, new opportunities. She places that down in front of you as well. Tell me, are you drawn to one of these cards in particular? Which calls to you? The hound. She gestures for you to touch it. Ophelia touches it. When you do, Ophelia, there is a strange sensation that comes over you. You can keep that, Rhiannon, oh, as a good. reminder. Cool. Uh, the hound is your card, and there is a magical blessing that is part of this reading. Um, I'm still working out exactly the details for each of them, but with the hound, I'm going to say that it's probably going to be along the lines of when you make a promise or you agree, you know, you forge a bond or loyalty or you make a promise to somebody, um, when something tries to compel you to act against that promise, you'll be able to return that card to me to basically pass a saving throw or succeed a skill check in some way. You're basically, it's like an automatic success um, that's trying to compel you against the thing that you've sworn um, to do. Nice. Right? Really cool. Um, she places these before you. These cards together tell me that an important decision was made for you long ago, and now there is someone or something that you feel deeply bonded to, deeply connected to, something that is important to you. But along the way, perhaps on a journey, perhaps you are still on a journey now, you have been given advice or someone has offered counsel or has pretended to be someone you could trust. Perhaps that is not the case, but the road is not yet completed. Your journey is not at an end. And it is those loyalty, those bonds, those chains of your past that I think will prove instrumental into where that journey will lead you. I feel you'll just sit there for a minute just looking at the card and just rubbing her tongue over her fangs, like in her mouth, just contemplatively. Th thank you for um, this um, lovely reading. Thank you. I hope that it is of help to you. I only knew that you would come. I knew that you would be here in this place, that your companions would seek me out this day, and that I believe the Dragon Empress wished for me to give you this reading. For what purpose, I cannot say. Well, I shall do my best with what you have shown me, and maybe it'll come true. Maybe a path will lead me where you may have already seen it lead me. For you, I, I see no destination. I see just a journey with perhaps oh. difficult decisions to make. And I just hope that this will offer you some guidance and comfort in troubling times. Okay. Your destiny is your own. My path is decided for me. I have a... Never mind. Um, thank you. And I feel we just turn up and we'll get up to leave and just, you know, just quietly leave, mm. holding the card. When you go to leave, Ophelia, something happens to you that doesn't happen to the others. There is a feeling. Whatever this reading was, you've been around enough divine power to know that there is divine magic about this, about this dwarf woman that you've just spoken to. Definitely some powerful divine magic is involved. And that reading has touched you with that same magic. 
It was almost a moment as you pass out and you see from the magical lights of the room, the shadows kind of spread on the wall uh, as you are leaving. There is almost this visage of a figure sat on a throne. And you get this, and whether or not Ophelia finds this unpleasant or comforting, I leave to you. But you know that feeling people talk about, like someone walking over your grave, that shiver up mm. your spine, that goosebumps, that kind of tingling of like, oh, someone's talking about me, or somebody just passed over my grave. There's that kind of sensation, mm. as if another divine power and this power have just brushed against one another. Yeah, I think that would give a figure some kind of comfort. Sure. I leave that to you to decide whether or whether or what you feel about that. But yeah, you uh, leave Ophelia. You see Ophelia step out of the room. Um, Rowan is waiting right at the front. <laughs> what did she say? Um, I've, I'm on a journey. She said I'm on a journey, and I'm yes. I'm very see? loyal. I knew it. Loyal, loyal. Okay. Yes. Uh, Fantastic. Um, as the doors begin to close, Rowan. You just, you glance back into the room, being the most excited about all of this, the one who was the most keen to come here, and you lock eyes with Kiva once again, and you are the only one to hear in your head, as you did when you were speaking with her. Thank you for bringing them to me. May the Empress guide your path. I do a, a solemn nod, a knowing nod yeah. of respect. Yeah. We're the only one who, no movement, no speaking, but you hear in your head from the, the secret that you shared with Kiva uh, and her secret that she shared with you, you feel that message kind of come across. And then, yeah, the door's shut. Yeah. Well, a big journey. Big journey, from the sounds of it. Seems like everyone got... Did she say that, <laughs> that we'd all be there? We'd all be best friends and... Nothing bad. Would I mean, yours was seemed very focused around that. So yes, right. Mine was just focused on the journey. No, no destination. Oh well, we'll make that up as we go. We'll find one, a destination. I have one. I have a destination. Why didn't she tell me that? Well. It's not necessarily that she's right in all things. A guide, not a prophet. Okay, um... Do you want to coin for the clever toad? No, Maybe the I'm, no I'm, could... I'm done, I'm I'm done with machine. fortunes and oracles and prophecies. My path is decided for me. I know where I am going. That's all I need to know. The Grave Father guides me, and the Grave Father is where I will go when my time is over. That's all I need Rowan's to know. backing away from that. Shopping, anyone? Because, um, I don't... I think I've had enough of, um... This. Prophecies and oracles? Yeah. That. Yes. Uh, let's leave. Ophelia? Yes. Let's go. You guys make your way down. I want to point out again, that was a completely random draw. I saw you shuffle it before you... <laughs> yeah, I did, uh, I sh finished shuffled it, I did check it so I could start thinking of ideas, but sure. those three cards were completely random. See that art. It's really cool. It's it's very very nice. So perfect. Um, well. Did we yes. physically take, well, for everyone else except me, did they physically take the cards or... They was touched it just the cards a... and felt something come in. I'm, I'm letting the players keep the cards as a reminder yes. of those powers. Okay. Um, but no, they, they touched the card. I mean, I'm just going to throw the card out. No, no, no. <laughs> they, it's not Gambit. Uh, yeah. yeah, they touched the card and they felt this power, this blessing. And you are all aware, Ophelia definitely has the sensation that this is more of a divine blessing. But I do want to make it clear, all of you know that when you touch that card, there was something magical about it. There is some sort of magical... You're aware of this power in a sort of very abstract sense. Um, so the Empress isn't dead, Hargrove. Huh, well, magic's magic, though. I don't know if it's divine magic. It, and also, divine magic can come from many different yeah, sources. Well, it can only come from the goddess. Yeah. Okay, okay. Rowan's a full believer now. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> 
Um, like but yeah, you guys make mine. your way back down the tower. <laughs> um, and You're free to be wrong if you want. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you are free to go about it as you wish. Do you guys want to basically head straight to this Mystique's, this tailor shop? Is that the plan? I think so. Yeah. Get it over with. Sure. Um, <laughs> you trek your way there. Between the reading and getting to Mystique's, it's probably about another hour. So you're kind of approaching sort of lunchtime-ish, kind of like early afternoon. Um, and you find your way up into the, you pass the Bright Shadow Cathedral. You can see that as you're making your way into Duskrise. Um, you see a massive temple. And perhaps a little bit of comfort to you, uh, Ophelia, is on your way to Mystique's, you have to also pass point 19 on the map, which is the House of Bindings. And you can tell that this is a temple. It's an SNM. Sure. This is a temple to the shrine, uh, shrine uh, Saint Dethia, who is the saint of death in the Siles Church. House of Bindings. Um, as in the shrouds that you are bound with when you die. Um, and so for the Altheans who are here, you see the familiar sights of a, um, a, a figurine, a, a female, like statues of a female archer but instead of a face, she has a skull. She still has long flowing hair. She's wearing like an ornate, almost like a medieval style dress with a big slit up the side. And she is holding or pulling a great longbow. And attached to each arrow is a ribbon that trails and wraps around her leg. Um, so it kind of like follows down. Um, and Saint Dithir is one of these ascended saints. Uh, she was in life uh, supposedly a some some histories say she was human some say she was an orc warrior but she was a warrior who basically was one of the first warriors to fight um in uh against the forces of the sovereign and the bright storm and things like that um and so she's now this kind of saint of death that watches over the souls of all who die Ooh. um and so you see these statues um but you also see like behind the temple mausoleums and like cemeteries right. and memorials and things like that. Um, clearly this is like a part of the town which is almost like a respectful grave site. And that familiar, you know, when you go in a graveyard and you get that somber kind of silence and that respectful kind of, you know, quiet, this area has that same feeling. And there's maybe a touch of home here for Ophelia, maybe. That same sensation, right? Seeing the skull-faced woman, you know, that's not the Grave Emperor, like obviously it's a female figure, but there is something maybe familiar about all of this. Um, and you can see it's a very gothic looking building, this temple. Um, you see black clad uh, male and female acolytes, you know, going about tending to the gardens and that sort of thing. Um, but you make your way past that. Head down some side streets, and you emerge in front of, um, sort of on a hill overlooking the river. Very picturesque little site, like a small two-story shop. Um, and it just has in beautiful sort of dark, uh, dark black kind of wood paneling, mystique. Uh, written in a sort of like um, silvery kind of blue. Um, uh, the shop window is actually blacked out. Um, mm. Uh, and it's very sort of mysterious and, and sort of alluring. Um, you can see that it is very, very well made. This town is, it's like a very expensive sort of shop and townhouse. Um, there is subtle magical enchantments in the sign that almost make it twinkle. Are you sure this is the place? It, it doesn't look like the kind of place where I normally get This is the place. Get this is 100% the place. Look at it. Wow, are we going to be able to afford anything in here? Fancy. Well, we can have a look, and maybe we can, maybe they're not into bartering, but we could try. At least to have a look of um, what you could, what you could look like. You've got greens, Rowan. Yes. You want to stick to that theme? Greens, does it does look good on you. My mother said it brought out my eyes. It really does. It really does. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> And uh, Gruff, you've got the blues. You want to stick with blue? What if we went into like, um, like a silvery sort of so blues? We're sticking with blues. I don't like the look you're giving me. The colors of the seas. It would remind you of home, maybe. Yeah, no, I really don't. We'll start with Rowan. Sorry, I zoned out there for a moment. <laughs> Were you saying something? Blue. Something. Yes. You like blue? That's a color. Do you like it? Oh, oh, uh, what's your favorite fish? Oh, probably. Hmm. I have to write down some bullshit fish that Kim <laughs> comes up with. Uh, glacier fish. Glacier fish. And what color is yes. that fish? Silver. Silver? Silver. Silver. Maybe some, we can add some silvers to your outfit. 
And what of your birds? What kind of plumage do they have? Ah, my birds. Any excuse. He knocks the staff, <laughs> and Saren, the il illusion of Saren pops up. Ah, Saren. Beautiful plumage of midnight black. Midnight? Midnight? The spirit is green, but yes. <laughs> yeah, the illusion yeah. is green. Ophelia, blue, black, silver. Resplendent. Exactly, that is what I was thinking as well. Resplendent. She is, I look at her. Nightly. Nightly. Got you that. Oh, okay. Oh, you mean, yeah. <laughs> we're we're going to make you look all nightly and nightly. And resplendent. Like sky. Oh, is there armor here? Well. Not yet, but we can get that at some point. But we just for now the the underneath part. I suppose knights do have to look good for parades. They do, and, and this could be your parade outfit. Yes, in front of the oh, duke. Yes. In front of the duke. I don't dare to dream I'll be in a parade. But if you are, this will be the place to go to get your outfit. Oh. Also, when you go to the the, the tournament. tournament. The tournament. Yes. <gasps> yes. Oh, I thought I'd just f maybe attend in what I. It's traditional. But you could. But imagine turning heads. Everyone yeah. will be looking straight at you, the most resplendent warrior at the festival, at the tournament. Everyone looking at me. Well, most. The knights. The people that like blue, silver, and black. Well, I don't like the idea of everyone looking at me. Well, shit. I <laughs> <laughs> love how you are literally stood outside this shop in a group of six just like looking at it and having this conversation. I'm just trying to convince Gruff to go through the door at this point. <laughs> oh, he's resigned to it. Okay. He's um, just like, you know, it's like a dad being taken to a shop by okay. the kids and... It's being dragged around. Yeah. Follow me and Ophelia. Okay, just and... tell me when I have to pay. I'll just... Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. You guys Wait a step in. <laughs> Montage. Uh, when you walk through the door, there is a. Um, it does. It's not like a chime, like a dingle, like a kind of shop bell kind of thing. But it, it sounds more like um, uh, a sort of gust of nightly air, and there's almost a bit of a chill as you pass through the door, like a. <laughs> You find yourselves in a quite dark, lit by sort of mood lighting almost. There are these like faint magical crystals embedded into the wall that do illuminate the place in that kind of cold blue light, but it is very dark. Everything is made of like very almost black wood. There are these black heavy curtains strung up all along the sides, and there are mannequins, maybe six, maybe eight or so mannequins with these beautiful looking outfits, masculine, feminine looking wares made from luxurious fabrics and accessorized with not jewels, but kind of sashes and uh, embroidered sort of tunics and belts and things like that. Um, you can see that there are glass locked display cabinets with jewelry in, uh, sort of very kind of Skyrim, if you imagine that kind of you know, glass top with a wooden mm -hmm. sort of set uh, piece in. You can also see various armoires and, and uh, wardrobes and things, all seemingly locked, beautifully carved and engraved, and most of them with symbols of gemstones, of things like uh, royalty, crowns, very um, ornate kind of decorations and things like that. You don't see any sort of salesperson. Uh, can I get everyone's passive perception, please? Oh. Uh, 15. 15. Uh, 11. 11. What is it, Tom? 9. It's 9. 13. <laughs> 13. 12. 12. So 15 is the highest. Um, yeah, you guys step in and looking around, you don't see anybody. There does seem to be a back room uh, marked off by a curtain, um, but yeah, you look around and don't really see anybody. But the quality of the work, any anyone can really tell this is obviously gorgeous work. This is very, very fine workmanship. Ophelia, look at this one. This oh, outfit wow. here, it's stunning. It's so heavy. The thread count on this. <laughs> heavy. As in, as in the quality, you know, and you know, the oh, yes. it feels heavy. Yes. It's got weight. It's got layers. Yes. That's the most important thing. So layers. while so Ophelia and sort of uh, Xanthius are like, I, you know, ogling one of these pieces and like hanging it up, what, what are Gruff, Daisy, and Rowan doing? Rowan is um, awkwardly standing with his hands clasped in front of him and he keeps nudging things accidentally with his big frame. He sort of bumps it, <laughs> catches it, stops it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. He's probably just browsing, mm -hmm. like 
going through like looking yeah. at the, the mannequins or looking yeah. in the display she's cabinets just, and stuff. Mm -hmm. She's browsing, probably looking at the jewellery and stuff as well in the okay. cabinet. Groff makes a half-hearted attempt to browse, picks up what he thinks is like a black drape to drape it on himself and is like, oh yeah, great. Not realizing it's actually part of the shop furnishing. It's a cut. <laughs> like, <laughs> but he's just like, it's a fancy material, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you guys kind of browse for a few moments. Um, Xanthius and Ophelia, as you are kind of, ooh, and you're examining the next piece, maybe looking at it, it is like a part of the wall comes alive. Oh. And you just hear this, like, hello, as the shadow <laughs> becomes a shape, oh, as they you. step you would look out. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and you see, stood before you, is a six foot tall black dragonborn. And they are not a humanoid dragonborn like Xanthius, they are a reptilian, like full snout, black scaled, Dragonborn, but their scales are like Vanta black. They are they are so black. Ooh. They are they are not glossy. They're almost matte. They are wearing a black tunic with just the faintest, subtlest tones of grey and silver um, to like break it up and accessorize it. But yeah, just perfectly camouflaged and blended in with their own shop. That they just emerged out of the darkness. Um, being a more reptilian Dragonborn, you're not immediately sure if they would be sort of uh, male or female. Uh, they do have like ridges and spines and things like that. And their eyes are purple. They have like purple draconic eyes. Um, and they just look and say, Oh, oh I'm so sorry. Welcome. I did not see you there. No, no, oh. of course, of course. Caught me by surprise. Um, As I do most of my clientele. Welcome, welcome to Mystique. You have such a wonderful shop here. It's beautiful. Thank you. We were just admiring your Thank products, you. your outfits. They look wonderful. Oh. Do you make these? Are you the artisan who makes... I am the tailor, yes. You're yes. very talented. Very well, talented. thank you. Yes, I'm very proud of myself. Very good. Oh, you it's strange, I have... I know most of the residents here in town, but I do not recognize any of you, and travelers often come by for my designs, but I've never had quite a eclectic gathering of individuals. Uh, I am going to say this for Kim's benefit now. Yes. Because I know she's going to mention this later on. Yes, it is the guy from DS9. <laughs> it's very much... Uh, it's, Garrick. It's Garrick, who's very similar, like, Just the way they speak time. and... The way that they speak and the, their mannerisms, that kind of wide-eyed, like... Oh, yeah. yes. Like, they yeah. almost... T like, there's a, a very mechanical movements, almost. Like, very off-putting. Like, there's something both charming and disarming about this person. Like, they look at you... And they're just like bearing into your soul, and like their movements are almost like, like the way they move their head right. and things like that. Very almost strange. Like Ten steps ahead, like Maybe, you know, yeah, there's, there's yeah, you might think that, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, but yes, they're like, ah, oh. oh, we've just arrived in well, Ashen Rest actually yesterday, uh, day before. Yesterday. That would make sense, yeah. Um, and we were hoping, uh, at, we are. Uh, going to be meeting the Duke um, tomorrow. Really? We are. Yeah. We are. Um, I see. And we have two here that um, we'd like to spruce Ooh. them up a bit. This is oh, Rowan. Knock the ceiling. <laughs> Just the two to spruce up. Do you. Are you implying. Well. Am I implying something? <laughs> well, I think I look. Good. Very good. Thank you. Thank it is you. important to have confidence. Isn't it? It is. It is. Well, um, I must say you are quite a splendid group of travellers. Thank you very much. But yes, we can... I can help you, if you wish. Yes. Ah, forgive me, I should introduce myself. I am Nixa Mist. Oh, they will come over and offer, you know, a clawed, scaled hand. Oh, it's really will take it gladly. <gasps> Takes it and then... <clears throat> <gasps> delicately kiss. Oh. I am Sister Ophelia Delarosa of the House of Blood. Lovely to meet you. House of Blood. <gasps> From across the sea. Yes. In Osseus. Yes, exactly. How did you Necromancy, know? Necromancy, if I understand. Yes. <gasps> Don't tell anyone. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Though your nation is not exactly a secret, my dear. No, but no, necromancy is not. Oh, likely. yes, yes. Well, I'm... I'm from Odaskir, which is a province here in the Draconic Empire, and I think that perhaps you would get on with many of my my kin. 
We see a pragmatic use in magic. There is nothing inherently wrong with certain types of magic. It is how they are used. Well, that's a very good trade. If I am under, if I if I am correct, in Osseus, you have uh, corpses, work the land, mm -hmm. and mines, and such things, don't yes, you? Yes, exactly. Yes. Very forward thinking, I think. Oh, very God, forward I, thinking. I think so too. Thank you very much. Oh, you're most welcome. How do you spell their name? Uh, <laughs> diary. N Y X X A. Oh, for God's sake! I can't believe and then it. Was. Missed I was with right. a Y. Course. N Y X X A. Nixer missed like the game. Nixer Riven. Got so many misspellings in this. Can Xanthius roll a history check with disadvantage? Uh, history check with disadvantage? Yes. Okay. Um, Katie, could I have one of my D20s back? You've been stealing them <laughs> all session, one by one. Fine, I'll roll this one twice. Um, <laughs> Oh, seven, uh, seven, eleven. Um, just a seven then. In that just case. a seven, and then can I have a? I'll let you choose performance or deception check. Performance or deception? I think they're both just as bad as each other. Oh no. Okay, uh, with advantage or oh, sorry, it's just normal roll okay. for this. One. Okie dokie, nineteen. Okay. Um, yeah, just that, that's it. I'm not say anything else. Um, yeah, they uh, they kind of turn to you and things like that. Uh, that's their name. Uh, Nixa will basically come around and shake everyone's hand. Um, and goes to kiss the hand. Yep, yeah, they'll let you. It's quite cold. Is that the customer? <laughs> they take their hand back. Thank you. Uh, they don't seem perturbed by either way. They come up, they shake Gruff's hand. Hello. Um, they'll My shake. name is Gruffith. Yeah. I'm from tomorrow. Ah. <laughs> ah, tomorrow. North of Iceheart, I believe. Aye. Yes. Known for fishing and... Uh, ah, yes, you are quite close to one of the gemstone mines up in Iceheart as well, as I believe. Indeed. Yes, I am familiar with your... your land. That's nice. And you... Xantius Oregon. Ah, another dragonborn. Always a pleasure to meet another child of our noble masters and mistresses. Indeed. Where are you from? Uh, oh, I'm, uh, I hail from Rust End, on the border of... In Caldra. Caldra and Gildai. Uh -huh. And what was your name again? Xanthius Oregon. Huh? Oregon, Oregon. <laughs> and there is a knowing look. And you know that this person knows exactly what that family is. Well, must make sure that you have my finest service. Indeed, Lord Oregon. I do will have. Yep. And you, my dear. Oh, hi. I'm Hello. Daisy. Lovely to meet you, Cauldron. Uh, yeah, I'm from Goodvine. Ah, yes, just to the west, I believe. Yes, very good, very good. To love the corset, my dear. Very beautiful. Thank you. So. How can I assist? We have a couple here who need some... Sprucing. Refinement, shall we Refinement, say. Yes. yes. Now, they'd like to stick to their colours, as you can see. Of we have course, greens on Rowan course. here, blues on Gruff, maybe introducing some silver, maybe some black. Mm, yes, uh, black would be an excellent contrasting colour, silver to highlight Wonderful fur and the texture of the hair as well. Yes, very good. The blue, obviously, for ice art, and you, this wonderful shade of skin, and like oh. takes your like arm, Rowan. If you will let them, obviously, they go to like grab you and say, "May I?" Uh, it's tentative, like you know, a dog that doesn't want his paws touched. Mm -hmm. You sort of let. Them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, they touch your hand, and you see that they do sort of like look at your the pattern on your arm as well. What a marvellous tattoo. <laughs> Tickles. But a beautiful complexion, yes, green, and I can see shades of other shades to complement, yes. And what sort of budget are we working with? I have, uh, with the bronze, carry the fine. I've got roughly uh, 10 gold. <laughs> what? So what? 89 gold. <laughs> I was like, where did it go? 89. Thank, the, thank the scions for that little <laughs> amendment. 
<laughs> and yourself, Griffith of Tremorrow? I... Uh, I want to spend ten gold, but I have a feeling this is going to cost a lot more than that. For ten gold, you might as well go down to the general store, my dear. I, I said that myself, but they said it's not good enough. But imagine what they might look like. Oh, I can imagine, but it is not for me to decide what one wishes to wear if if Gruffith of Tremorrow does not want to spend more than that, then that is their decision to make. No, I will. As the Lordling here says, first impressions matter. Oh, indeed, they very much do. I must try. Especially in yes. Cauldra. Yes, is, my dear? Is, is it okay if maybe they try a couple of things and then see what... I have a few do? items. I, I tend to mainly make custom work, but I do have a few things that we can try on to see and examine and things like that. Perhaps not in the exact shades you're looking for, but it is... I can create something quite quickly. We can try different things that perhaps are not in the colours you want, and then I can have them furnished in a colour scheme of your design. Do you outfit any of the uh, knights in this region? I have, yes, of course. I, there are many of Which them ones? have come to me. Uh, all of the knights of the realm of Ash and Rest, Sir Griold, uh, Dan Cassandra. Sir Griold. Yes. What's he like? Uh, Sir Griold is pleasant company. Uh, uh, the knights only really come to me when they need a, a new outfit for a ball or a, a gown or a tournament or some such. I mainly work with Dame Cassandra. She is far more um, concerned with her appearance than Sir Griold and the other one. <laughs> Sir Morning. No, no, not Sir Morning. The other knight of the realm. Sir Laura. Nice. <laughs> Where are they? Sir Loin. I got nothing. I got nothing there. Sir Eldreth, Ignis. Out. Sir Ignis. Uh, whatever you made for Sir Griold, that. I can certainly, yes. I mean, it was a fairly, yes. I will have to obviously size it up and adjust it for your frame and colours, but uh, yes, I can find something. And they go away and they come back with a surcoat, like a, a kind of knightly surcoat, but this one is made from exquisite kind of velvets. It's studded with like gemstones and beautiful trim and things like that. And it is a knightly surcoat, so kind of done up in the middle. And then it comes with a wide leather belt as well. Made popular um, by surcoat. Yeah. Yeah, by Sir Coat. Uh, but no, they try that on, and it is, you know, it would fit Gruff quite nicely, but it's not in the right colours. It would need to be adjusted. Um, now, within your budget, what, how much money do you happen to have on you, good sir? And I do, please, I am not some charlatan taking you for a, a whatever coin you have on you. I just want to know what oh, your no, budget I, I, is. I would never assume that. Uh, how, how, how much did Sir Griold pay? You perhaps do not want to know the answer to that question. Okay, maybe... Tell me what you have and I will about work a, to your budget. About a hundred gold. Yes, I can work with something around that. And I won't... We can work it so it's not quite the full hundred. I want to make sure I don't take you for everything you have. And your companion here, own, was it 89 you said you I've had? just found another pocket. I've got 21 silver and two bronze, or two copper. Two bronze. Well, I won't worry too much about the small change. Maybe um, an accessory like a belt. I can... I will have something made in your appropriate colours to an appropriate style of your liking once we spend some time. Shall we say 50 gold? Per outfit, of course. And the offer extends oh. to the rest of you as well, if that is something you are interested in. Um, oh, no, I... <laughs> no. 50 gold, that's... I can do something for cheaper, but it would not be as impressive. I don't want to disappoint you or, or the Duke. Or oh, Rowan, I wouldn't be disappointed if you don't want to pay it. It is your money. But it got to look fancy. Honestly, if, if it means I look like Sir Griold, I'll pay up to a hundred. Sir Griold's latest uh, work that I did for him was something in the several hundred gold. Okay, a discount, a yes, hundred I can gold make version something. of that. Very good. If that is what you want, then I'm happy to do that. Uh, there will be a bit more refinement, some nicer trim. Uh, we may be able to use some cheaper gemstones in some of the studying and such. Um, and yes, we can do something along those lines. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so this is sort of like looking at your sort of rather patched together sailor's kind of fisherman outfit and things like that. Practical. Um, it is very practical. Um, but, and you can see that, that Nyx is kind of taking this in and they are sort of like, yeah, it's a pair of trousers. And, and it's like they're going to match it up. And they, 
they're probably going to take in that practicality. Like, it's not going to be yeah. embellished. Mm. It's going to be nice. I think Gruff yeah. would say as well, uh, would it be warm? I'm not used I, to... I can make it warm, yes, yes. Or I can make it cooler, if you wish. Then so maybe if I could take it back to the north... Oh, if I came back to my village, looking like Sir Griol. Can you imagine? What I can do is I can have it padded, uh, sometimes a surcoat or a... Um, uh, worn under the armor, uh, we can make something along those lines. So it would be padded, so it would be more comfortable if you were to be wearing armor, or if indeed you wanted it to be warmer and such, I can have it padded, yes. That would be grand. Yes, of course, yes. Oh, that would, in that case, then yes, the extra 50 gold would accommodate for making it quite warm and, and padded and such, but yes, we can be about the same amount. You two should have told me sooner mm -hmm. about Sir Griold and dressing like Sir Griold. I. Well, we did mention the, the parade, so the festival. You said you didn't want people looking at you. I bet you but found you... me the person who dresses Sir Griold. I was just a guess. I wasn't certain. And I think for looking at Rowan, uh, Nixa begins pulling out sort of almost, not like quite kilt, but like these kind of like long sashes with like almost like a kind of wrap around the waist, trousers, um, still leaving your feet, maybe like finding like a nice pair of like... Um, uh, kind of like leathered sandals that have been embellished and things like that. Very similar to what you're wearing now, but with extra embellishments. Um, maybe like a, almost like a cape added to it, like a kind of like, you know, for a dramatic kind of effect, um, pulling out green fabrics and things like that. And they say, well, luckily I can, I have enough that I can probably make you something. Now, if I rush it, I can probably have it done by the morning. Oh. Uh, where well, we are intending to meet the Duke tomorrow uh, in the af early afternoon. Mm, in, the in the morning, apparently. If well, it is for the public audience, I believe it is in the morning. Yes, no, I, my mistake. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it will be troublesome to work it that uh, quickly, mm. but if you are... You said that you are presenting, you are meeting with the Duke in this public audience. Oh, we are, yes. And you... Uh, are you in the Duke's... You we seek a, his... Uh, Duke's favour that we wish to um, uh, cash in. <laughs> clearly you are travellers of some renown to be carrying a duke's favour. Perhaps then, shall we say this? I will, for the cost of the materials, so 100 gold and 50 gold for these outfits, um, but I will, normally I would charge extra to have this done in a rush order. But perhaps shall we say, you can owe me a favour. Mm. And what would that favour be? I will come and speak to you at some time and perhaps ask you to help me perhaps source uh, some fine ingredients uh, or some fine materials, I should say, uh, or perhaps uh, if I have a problem that I need assistance with. Think of this as a start of a beautiful relationship. Oh, that's lovely. It is lovely. <laughs> beautiful friendship. And at some point, I think the rest of us would oh, probably yeah. intend to come back. I would, and... I would like another outfit too, but it, it doesn't need to be a rushed. Well, I would only have the time for the two. That's fine. That's fine. But yes, please come by with more business. I will be glad for more business. I have a question. Of course, please, my dear. Rowan, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Does it come with sleeves? I wouldn't mind sleeves. I can add sleeves if you wish. Yes, please. Very good, does I will. It, does it cost any more money? No, 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 no. It's simply part of the design. It's a lot. It shouldn't cost me more fabric. Well, I will simply adjust the design only. There's, all, there's almost always spare fabric left over, my boy. I always cut extra, just to make sure if there are any things I have to redo or some such. I'm quite tall. You are? I will need your measurements <laughs> before you leave, both of you, but that won't take too much time. Are we done? Settled? Oh. I, would re I would request the payment up front, as this will be a Rowan starts them. putting the coins on the, on the counter. You see that as soon as the Nixa sees the coins, I'm not even going to have you guys roll insight because this is quite hard for them to resist. Their eyes just sparkle when they see mm. their money. They're just like, mm. you can see that they are just so happy to be seeing money. And they just... It's like pocket lint and all that stuff. A button picks that out. <laughs> just <laughs> Sorry, but... brushes that away. Can I, while I'm here, can I just get some 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 ribbon, some orange ribbon? I just kind of want to update some of my... I can cut you some offshoots of orange ribbon. Yes, that won't be a problem. Of course. 
just goes literally goes into the back room and comes out with like a cut of orange ribbon for you and just hands that to you. Um, all right, takes the gold, so 150 uh, from Rowan, so 100 from Graf, 50 from Rowan, and will take your measurements. Like takes you like in in the store, just pulls out like a tape measure, begins like taking your measurements. In his gut. Uh, stop that! Stop that! No, need Don't correct do that. It won't be comfy. It won't be comfy, Graf. Exactly. Plus, also the belt will act as a sort of it will help keep everything in in place. Um, measures, does it very efficiently. Um, they do uh, kind of wave their hand and cast a spell, and you see that their little notebook just lifts up off the ground, and the pen, like a quill, kind of floats over to it with an ink pot, and it writes as Nixer is speaking to it. Like, so it's an unseen servant. They just conjure that, and it starts writing for them. Uh, this, 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 takes measurements. Right, and then, uh, yes, and then once it puts those down, it, uh, Nixer says, fetch me the midnight blue and the black, and the, we'll have the velveteen, and bring that in, and, and send that to the back, send that to my workshop. Um, all right, very good. Yes, well, this... I will begin. To, I will have to start work right away. But thank you very much for your custom. Well, and thank you for becoming a new customer of Mystique. And uh, thank you for letting us watch your wonderful work. Oh, please, you're more than welcome. Uh, it's been delightful to meet you all. Wonderful to meet you too. Thank Sister you. Sister Ophelia Della Rosa, mm -hmm. the House of Blood. Yes. Rowan. Rowan. Gruffith of Tremorrow. Aye. Daisy. And Xanthius Oregon. Yep. Big, draconic, like, fanged smile. Just marvellous. Do you have change for a gold? I need some more bronze. No, that's, <laughs> ignore him. Ignore him. Oh, you have some. No, okay, I'll sort you later. Oh, thank you, Gruffith. Leave, leave the dra dragon. Very well. Enjoy your day. You. I will see you promptly in the morning. Come as soon as close to, I would say, 7 a.m. as you can. Okay. I have everything ready. All right. Well, pleasure. Pleasure Thank to you. A good, a good day. A good day. Uh, and yeah, you make your way out of Mystique and Nix's shop. Um, well, that was a thrill ride. It was. How Lord exciting! Xanthius Oregon. Such a mood in there. <laughs> I just, Lord Xanthius. Just Xanthius. I've said, I've said before, just Xanthius. Do you? Did modest. they seem like mm. they might know you? Mm. Well. They look very... Are you, is your family famous? Yeah. Not famous as such. It's a house in Gildai. A host in Gildai. But they knew of your house. Mm. And they're not even from there. You're being mysterious. I'm not being mysterious. You're being just mysterious? I don't difficult. want to... I, I, I'm just riding on a high of a shopping trip. Mysterious. That's all. Mysterious. I, I, I get the buzz now. I got a buzz. You did? Yes. The measuring? They were very nice, weren't they? Yes, very. Mm. I hope you're excited tomorrow when you put the clothes on. It's going to be such a nice fit. Everything is going to move so freely. You're going to feel wonderful wearing I'm these clothes. Grass is going to look like a knight. Like Sir Griol. Yeah. I knew that would get her attention. His attention. His attention. <laughs> <laughs> Gruff and Kim being overlaid there. Um, <laughs> I am a mystery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And obviously, you're going to still keep your current clothes and things like that. But yeah, I imagine for Gruff, this is going to be like a kind of knightly surcoat with trousers and like a nice leather Four belt. Kind of like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and also, just like, also, if you do eventually get sort of heavier armor, and keep in mind that you won't be able to wear metal armor as a druid. Yeah, so, yeah. but if you do get like a kind of like plated, like, you know, heavier armor or something like that, um, this, the, the circo would be exactly the perfect thing to go underneath it, or even over the top of it, to like have that knightly kind of tabard look and stuff like that. So yeah. Cool. Um, all right. Um, for the sake of anything else, uh, unless you guys have anything you desperately want to do ahead of this mission for the Lamplighters Guild, um, I would, I'm happy to just sort of be like, yep, you spend time kind of going around the town, um, you know, having some lunch. You guys can like mark off like a silver piece for lunch or something like that. Sure. Um, there is a place. That sells healing potions, salves and yeah. potions. Yes, there is. Yeah, I think would be a good idea to buy a couple of those before we do this. Probably, actually, that's a good idea. It was cool. Do we actually have any right now? No. Aquilas. Uh, nope. Aquilas are chemical. Aquilos. Aquilos. Grumpy hog. Aquilos. Aquilos are chemicals. Aquilos. I thought it was Aquilo. Aquilos are chemicals. You're correct. <laughs> I was trying to get to that point in my in my wiki. Yeah, Aquilos are chemicals. Yes. I think we should get some vitality potions. 
uh, healing salves. Yes, no, that would be a good idea if this does turn into some kind of fight tonight, Rockets. which I hope it doesn't. Um, uh, you, you were told that that you are being hired as bodyguards for a reason. I will yeah. point out. I don't think that they would need to pay two hundred per lamp if it, there wasn't going to be something. I live to hope that maybe we'll just get two hundred and nothing will happen. You know. I hope we get paid. We um, spent a lot. Well, just before, because it is nearly time for a break, um, uh, and Aquilo's our chemicals, you can go in, uh, you would meet uh, Aquilo himself, he's a large orc. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, he is a large orc man in his 50s. Um, he has a big bushy beard, yeah. <laughs> uh, bald head, um, and he's very jolly, he's sort of like, oh, well, welcome, welcome, come in, hello, hello, I'm Aquilo, I'm the alchemist here, and that's very, very sort of like pompous and very thing. Um, uh, you can see that in his shop window, he has this kind of uh, very um, unique looking kind of clockwork mechanism that almost looks like potions and vials are dancing and the kids come and watch it and it's very kind of cool. Um, you can see that the store itself is filled with, you know, potions and vials and bottles of ingredients and this sort of thing. Um, you can also see that he sells not just like, you know, adventurer's potions, but it's things like common medicines or, you know, uh, things to treat diseases and infections, help with aches and pains. Um, there are medications to help with fertility or contraceptives and things like that as well here. He's a pharmacist. Um, he's a pharmacist, yeah. There's also things like paints and inks as well that he sells. He has like a little row for like kids to come in and buy like paints and inks and, and you, know, you know, things like that. He's you, like a like an old school kids. chemist, basically. Do you have any of that banana flavored cowpole? I used to have it when I was younger. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I do have a banana flavored medicine. Yes, yeah. yes, oh, of I course. Used to have that I can, uh, you know, sometimes I can make a custom if you want a particular flavor. I can adjust. It's and exactly make like the sweets. Yeah, it's very good. Um, but for your interests, uh, Aquilo will mention that he has three three items that uh, mercenaries and adventurers and travelers and things like that often buy from him. Um, he has uh, what he calls a Vitality Potion. Um, this is a consumable potion. Uh, it costs 50 gold. Um, uh, it's a bonus action to drink, and you gain 2d4 plus 2 temporary hit points. So this is okay. a, like, replacing the regular healing potion. This is a way of, like, almost, like, giving yourself a burst of energy to fight harder, which is represented by the temporary hit points. So it won't heal you if you're down, but it will help you absorb damage and things like that. Cool. Um, there is also a healing salve, uh, which is a consumable. It costs 150 gold. You get three uses out of each one. Mm -hmm. um, during a short or long rest, you can apply the healing salve to yourself or another creature and make a medicine check. The creature reg regains hit points equal to 1d10 plus the medicine check minus 10. So say like you roll a 15 on your medicine check, that would minus 10, become a five, so you get D10 plus five HP back. But you can only use it during a short or long rest. So it's a good way of like, if you're running out of hit dice to spend on your healing, right. to get that little bit of extra healing to like top you up basically. Nice. But it's only three uses and then it's done. Okay. And then the last thing he sells is an alchemical weapons oil. This is also consumable, 75 gold. It's a bonus action to activate. You can coat one melee weapon or 10 pieces of ammunition with this oil. For the next minute, attacks using that weapon or ammunition deal an additional d4 of and you choose when you buy it fire cold or lightning damage holy crap Ooh. it's like a little um resin pine resin or whatever yeah, yeah. Souls. um that's cool as well. 75 like gold for that i spent all my money in clothes <laughs> uh sorry how much for the posh vitality potion is 50 uh the healing solve is 150 because it's three uses and then the alchemical weapon oil is 75. Well, so you I'll, might be. I'll wait out. Some of, yeah. I <laughs> you as well, yes. I spent all my money on hotel rooms. Uh oh. And How I... much do you have left out of interest? You don't have to tell me. You just show me your bag of money. Yeah. 160. <laughs> Daisy just opens a bag and points in. Mm, one, two, three, four. I rain man it. I get the 106, exactly. Well, I've got 110. So it's on you then. Not well, actually, you're gold dragonborn, right? Yeah. 
there would probably be a little bit of latent magic from your gold draconic ancestry that you literally glance at that bag right. and you're like, yeah. yeah, there's about 106 gold in there. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Wow. gold dragons have an ability where they can know exactly how much gold they have like in their lairs and presence. And I imagine that gold dragonborn maybe have like a little touch of that where like generally they can like look in say a chest and just know how much money's in it. I catch like, it suspiciously fast. Yeah. I just um, imagine it's like jelly beans in a jar. Yeah. yeah. I always, they're just like, it's really yeah, good. Exactly. And they, they don't need to get it on. They don't have those competitions yeah. in Guild Eye. Oh, it's just gold in a jar. Yeah. Like, even if, like, say, like, you know, the chest was like, oh, it's all silver at the bottom and only gold at the top, a gold dra or a gold dragonborn or a gold dragon would still be able to be like, oh, the, the value of this chest is this, because you've got silver coins under there. Like, they would just like be like, yeah, yeah, there's all silver coins under there. I know nice. that. Awesome. And how many do, how many, how many of these potions do you have? Well, I can prop some more. I have um, I have four of the vitality potions. Four. Uh, I have yeah, um, kind of all of the. I have a, a fire oil, a coal, uh, an ice oil, and a, and a lightning oil. Um, and I have two um, healing salve kits. I also sell things like healers kits. So if you need to bandage a wound or something like that, I, I have those on stock. Um, I have things like anti venoms and such as well. Hmm. Depending Interesting. On what doing. I'm very tempted by a lot of these things. What about you? I, I was just gonna get one of the one of the potion things, maybe. I would also like one of the potion things, maybe. A vitality potion? Yes. Yes, of um, course. I generally make about four sort of every month or so. Really? Unless I have a special order. Uh, I should also point out that you you're all adventurers and mercenaries and such and traveling, you go around the Empire and such things? Yeah, well, we've been hired by the Guild oh, well, uh, for oh, something to know. Oh, right, I see. Well, if you're ever out of outside of Ashen Rest and you come across um, rare ingredients, yeah. uh, sort of um, parts of Vault Spawn or rare herbs and things like that, if you bring them to me, I can identify them and I, I, I generally will can make something from them. Oh, um, that's a shame. See, I froze something a while back just outside a cave near Burnell. I knew I, you'd be the person I could have sent that to. Oh yes, I mean, well, uh, sometimes some some parts I can't always use, but you know, generally there are normally things I can use. Um, if you come across uh, a, some sort of poisonous creature, if you can get some of its natural poison, okay. they often can be turned she into drinks. medicinal <laughs> properties. Uh, and now, what would you need acid. to make more of yeah. these potions? Uh, vitality potions. Yes. They can be found. There's um, a somewhat not a rare, but a sort of uncommon herb. Uh, it tends to grow in uh, you know, dark woods or caves, places is where sunlight doesn't reach but moisture does. Okay. Sort of a mossy kind of herb. Um, it, that is quite common if you can bring that to me. Hmm. How about we get two of these potions for 90 gold and a promise that if, in our adventuring ways, we do come across any of these herbs, I'll bring them straight to you. Well, uh, yes, uh, well... Give me a persuasion check. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> sure. Uh, persuasion. That's, I believe, just plus two, yeah. Um, eh, eh, five. <laughs> well, you wouldn't really have much use for this kind of herb unless you're a trained herbalist and alchemist. You wouldn't really be able to do much with it. Look, what I'm saying is... Fuck off. The potions are the potions. <laughs> their, their prices are set. But if you happen to find these things and you need someone to turn them into something, I generally won't charge you money. If you can bring me the ingredients, I'll just make you whatever I can make you. Um, but I'm just saying, if you come across anything unusual, bring it, bring it to me, and I'll see what I can do with it. Mm. Can't blame me for trying. No, no, of course not. Not, not much of a handler, really. The prices are the prices. I understand. Uh, but yeah, if you guys want to buy that, you can each buy a Vitality Potion. I don't have them in D&D Beyond, you just going to have to remember what they do. Okay. Um, but it's bonus action, 2d4 plus 2 temporary hit points. I will make you a thing for next week if you don't use them. Sure. Um, okay, I'll do 50 from mine. Hmm. Uh, yeah. All right. So we've got two of those to dish out. And is, it, um, is it a bonus action to drink myself, action for someone else? Um, it is Can a, it yeah, if you want to feed it, but keep in mind, remember that, what? Potion me. Oh. Um, eh? And pass that one down to Tom. Um, I will remind you that these are temporary hit points, so feeding them to somebody else 
but there's not a huge reason why you would do that um, unless you're like running up to them in combat and pouring it in their mouth while they're still up. If somebody's down, temporary hit points aren't going to help them, right? Probably these are yeah. these are probably potions that you either want to drink when you start getting low on hit points and you want to keep yourself alive a bit longer, or they're things that you could drink before a fight to give you some temp HP at the beginning of the fight. Um, that kind of thing. They will last as well until the, you either lose them or you they get replaced. So if you wanted to, you could drink them before a fight. Cool. All right. Great. Well, yeah. Actual full-on healing potions are going to be very rare. When you do have them, they will basically heal you. I haven't decided if they heal you to full or nearly full, but they will be potent. They will be much stronger. Cool. It's going to be more like video games and, and, and movies where it's like you drink the healing potion and you're back in the fight rather than like... I've got six hit points. Oh, I got hit again. I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's she blasted me again. But yeah. much more expensive as well. Yeah, and rare. Like, very hard to find. Like, yeah. Aquilo doesn't have them of most alchemists. Point. Yeah, he could probably make you one if you bring him the right ingredient. Sure. Um, okay, I'm good. All right. I'm satisfied. Anything else? Otherwise, I will pass time. So we see, you know, the sun passes through the sky. You guys maybe go and get some lunch from somewhere, um, and you you pass the time. Um, just as the sun is beginning to set, uh, you guys make your way back to the Clever Toad uh, to meet with the person that you're supposed to meet. Um, just as the sun is beginning to dip down, the uh, Tarek Tarek Kobolds are busy at work. Um, ignore Snort. <laughs> <laughs> I try. I try. Really hard. I don't know where it came from. It came from somewhere. We're just gonna move on. It's a birthday snow. It's a birthday snow. There's a farm nearby. <laughs> the Tarek Tarek family are busy at work. Um, you are uh, sort of attended to by Biscuit Tarek and Iskit Tarek. Yeah. Um, they kind of. Yep. Uh, they attend to you for a little bit. And then in the door, uh, kind of looking around, and they see you and seem to recognize you as if they've been given a description of you. Uh, you see a halfling woman, um, maybe in her sort of early 40s, um, with this bright kind of like lavender purple hair, big puffy like wavy hair, kind of like daisies, but done in sort of like an up ponytail and it spills down her back. Yeah. Um, she's dressed in not like leather armor, but you can see she has like um, like a leather toolkit and um, she's got like a, a pair of glasses with like lots of different lenses and crystals and things like that. She kind of has like a little bit of a look of an inventor, a uh, little white blouse, little uh, leather pants, tall boots. Um, quite kind of like buxom and round for a halfling and, and she sort of like looks around and she's got like a little neck chief around her neck and she's like, oh, yeah, and she scuffles over and she's just like, hello, um, I, th I think that you're my guards for the evening? Oh, uh, for, were you sent by the Lamplighters Guild? Uh, yes, uh, Illuminator uh, Teresa Lavendale. Well, we are uh, going to be the ones that are escorting you tonight. Wonderful. I, I, I do hope that you're better than um, the, 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 uh, the last lot that they all sent. Oh, well, what happened to the last lot? Oh, well, I mean, I wasn't part of it, um, and the Illuminator that went with them <laughs> kind of suffered the same, um, but um, uh, just, uh, quite, a, quite a bit of a beating, really. Um, yes, this area is quite rough. <laughs> do you know um, who might have attacked these people? Well, I... And she's kind of, like, looking around. Um, Hypothetically. Uh, she looks around and like, oh, well, not that I want to disparage any of the other guilds in Ashen Rest, but that area is sort of known to be where many members of the Carpenters Guild like to rest, and they sort of see as, you know, part of their community is the right word I think I'm looking for. Um, when she says all of this, uh, can you all make perception checks for me, please? Mm. Oh, mother fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. <laughs> 11, 14. 14? 18. 18. Five. Three. Five. All right, the 14 <laughs> and the 18, um, Ophelia and Gruff. Um, Teresa uh, is kind of quite loudly saying this uh. stuff, and when you look round in the Clever Toad, you can see a pair of labourers hands covered in sawdust you can see like a leather belt with like chisels and like you know things on their belt just staring and like looking in hers and now yours direction and they've kind of got these kind of 
more soured looks on their face. Um, but Teresa did not notice them. Like, she looked around and just completely didn't notice that they were there. And, and she's like, but like I said, you wouldn't hear me disparaging another guild. Um, but yes, they do seem to have a bit of a problem with us doing our business in the area. But that's fine. I'm sure you're going to fare much, much better. I feel like I'm in safe hands. And you are. Oh, wonderful. Pause. Pause. Sorry, yes. Y yes, pause, yes, yes. <laughs> um, but yes, um, well, uh, uh, well, first of all, uh, uh, Teresa is what my mother calls me. Uh, you can call me T. Um, um, yes, uh, what are all your, uh, your names? Xanthius Oregon. Xanthius, lovely, lovely. Daisy. Hello there, that's a very sweet name, Daisy. <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, I'm Sister Ophelia Delarosa of the House of Blood. Oh, <laughs> um, oh well, lovely to meet you, sister. Thank you, and you. Yes, uh, hello. Rowan kneels down. Oh, hello, I'm Rowan. Even kneeling down, Rowan is still taller than probably pleasure this woman. To meet like you. she's like three feet tall. Um, so she's like, oh, pleasure to meet you as well. Oh, I, I feel certainly safer in your hands or arms. <laughs> um, yes, very good. Uh, hello. Hello. Oh, you look quite the uh, the tough one as well. My name is Graf. <laughs> Hello, Graf. Grafeth of Tremoro. Oh, well, is. lovely to meet you. Um, uh, <laughs> yes, please, call me T. Everyone does. Hello, um, T. Yes, um, but uh, yes, I'm so I'm the Illuminator. Um, do you have any uh, questions before we head over to the area? Or? Yes. Um, how long would it take for each lamp to be repaired? A, fa a brilliant question. Thank you. Um, yes, so um, the process is uh, quite... Um, it's quite delicate, and I can't begin to conduct it until the sun has fully gone down. Um, there is a certain... The way that the magical power source to each light is provided, it's dormant until it becomes nighttime. I need the magical source to be active so I can begin the repairs. Um, it's quite a lengthy process. I... It will take me about an hour to fix a light. Okay. Um, but I will need to... I, I need to sort of be undisturbed during that time. Right. Um, and it will take, so three hours potentially total. Yes, and but we need to be done before dawn, before, before the sunrise because that's when the, the the magic shuts off i see and um how many of the um hypothetically carpenters um attacked last time oh i couldn't say i, I only really heard about it second hand um i'm i'm sort of quite new to the lamplighters guild i mean i'm i'm skilled at what i do but and i've been taught by by the chief illuminator, um, but yes, I'm not. I don't really know everyone that well yet. Okay. And, um, no, unfortunately not. Sorry. Hmm. Three hours. Sounds good. Sounds good. Wonderful. All right. Well, I'll show you the way. I suppose uh, we can start making our way there now. Okay. Um, by the time we get there, I suspect the sun will have gone down and the light. Well, the the magic will be there, but I'll need to do the repairs. All right, let's get going. Wonderful! Um, as, we, as we leave, yes. I just want to sneak a look at the carpenters who were sat there and just be like... You got you a 14? Uh, 14, yeah, and but like, as we walk out, I just want to be like... Yeah, just you... Just see if they're, like, eye-watching us. They're not, they're not sat there anymore. <laughs> oh, they're gone. <laughs> oh, they're, they're gone. gone. Okay. They're gone. Okay. Oh, you didn't see, see you didn't see later. Them I think as we we kind of not wanting to worry Teresa, but to everyone mm -hmm. else, I would say, you know, I'd I I would mumble, you know, like there were two laborers there and they're gone now. And okay. they were not happy. All right. Uh well, uh I'm going to uh first of all, uh I'm gonna have quite a lot to do. So I need one of you to run Teresa. She's gonna be a temporary retainer. I'm gonna be using MCDM's retainer rules. Um so I just need somebody to take charge of her. She only has a basic attack and uh, a couple of features to worry about. How many NPCs have I killed in the past? All of them. All of them. Right. Oh, I'll take her then. That's why we call That's you the NPC killer. She takes you to the uh, sort of southeastern end of the Riverside District, um, and you emerge into a sort of small plaza with a fountain, a stone fountain up on a sort of raised platform, and several buildings around the outside. And you can actually see these three, um, they are metal and stone columns with these kind of magical everlights, these torches that are built into them basically function as lampposts. And their lights are flickering and dim and clearly broken. They're not providing really any illumination at all. Um, you can see that there are several buildings, but perhaps more concerned to all of you, and I think Nim would especially point this out to you, Daisy, is there are a number of alleyways mm. that lead into this plaza 
tight, narrow, the tall buildings of Ashen Rest, these kind of two, three story buildings on each side, um, creating these very narrow, dark looking alleyways. And as you guys arrive in the plaza with Teresa uh, accompanying you, uh, you see that some figures are already lurking around, almost, almost anticipating you. Yeah. As you see, you see a group of individuals with hatchets and chisels and other carpentry tools. <laughs> Someone's got a lathe. Yeah, a lathe, yeah. What are you gonna do with that? Compound saw. Compound saw. <laughs> and with Clamps. that, that is gonna be the end of part one oh. as we are gonna oh. take our break. Uh, thank you all. We will see you in part two just after the break. Bye bye. See you next time. Bye. Oh, oh. Uh, just before we go to fully on break, yeah. I promised that I would show off the wonderful map library Ooh. from Roll and Play Press. Ooh. So this boy. is a enormous collection. Oh, it's so heavy. That's a big boy. So inside here, uh, and they're all color coded, uh, here are <laughs> maps for all wow. of the adventures in the book. And let me so uh, pass rich. a couple of these around. You guys can fold them out and show off the artwork. The artwork is really gorgeous. Gorgeous. And these are dry erase as well, right? They are dry erase as well, yes. Cool. And they put and they match up with the adventures you can find in oh. One Shot Wonders as oh well. My I have a house. Oh, these are. Oh, damn! I have a skelly. And I'm definitely going to be using these. I have a feeling because they provide some really cool ideas. Yeah. Whoa. And some of them like match oh, up. So like cool you've got like parts of a town there, Trot, and I think that actually t like the maps can be placed next to each other to create an even larger Ooh. space. And Mine's got a big statue Ooh. on. Big it. statue. They're double sided. And Beach holiday, anyone? Woo! Oh, that looks cool. I love this one. That's it's like dining hall, dining like hall. a manor house. Mine's got a dragon skeleton. So there that's, you go. That's that's huge. So those are all available. That's right. So that Kickstarter is running now, but it's I think it's um, ending fairly soon. So if you want to go and check that out, it's on their Kickstarter, which I th believe there should be a link in the chat. Yeah. Uh, or if not, you can find it on their website. Um, and go check that out. Very, very cool. This whole thing is just great. If, if you don't have the time to prep, for and stuff. the fact that it's all in one collection. It's all in one. And all in one collection. it's so nicely and done. Lay. And dry erase. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, very, very cool. I love stuff like this. It makes being a GM, because uh, like if you're playing digitally, there's a lot of like digital maps and that available, but actually having stuff like this for a physical game, yeah. very, yeah. very handy. Uh, but that's it. We're going to take our break now. Uh, we will see you in five minutes and we'll be back soon. See you in a bit. Bye. 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 Welcome back to part two of High Rolls of Thea, the Dragon Empire. Our party of heroes have taken on a job for the Lamplighters Guild of Ashen Rest, protecting Illuminator Teresa Lavendale as she attempts to repair several Everlights, uh, lampposts, lanterns that are scattered around parts of the city in an area, a rough part of the Riverside District. Our party have met with the Illuminator, made their way to the plaza, and there they've encountered several shadowy figures waiting for them. Mm -hmm. um, I am going to, I'm probably going to be doing a lot of standing up, so I might even just stay standing up the whole time. How many time. are we talking? Do you want a tiny hand? Oh, look at her. She's so small. Nice. We have a tiny, tiny lady. Um, so uh, if we can get a lovely big picture of the map, please. Yes. Um, so I will highlight a couple of points here on the map. So you guys are all coming in from this side. Uh, these posts here and the one over there are the three Everlights that you need to repair. Um, these are all buildings. They all look like, you know, people's houses. Uh, this is like a general store. Um, and these are all like individual people's houses. There are obviously more of them you know, away from the map. Uh, these areas in between the houses are the alleyways that I mentioned. As you can see, one side is kind of fenced off and is impassable. Um, there is the fountain in the middle, and then all of these like little barrels and pits and pieces are scattered around as well. Sure. The all figures right. sure. that you can see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. They all have carpenter weapons. Yes. Uh -huh. If only we didn't go against Space the noise. cotton candy guild. Oh, that would have been so good. So. <laughs> but the thing is, they would shove your face in the cotton candy machine. Oh, no, that might be worse. Oh, candy, yeah. 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 Sugar everywhere. Yeah, that is that. And then they a set it on fire. Pit for a king, just molten candy. <laughs> yeah. But that's the thing, then they set it on fire and sugar, like hot sugar, molten sugar is bad. Ugh. No, you know what? Carpenters is fine. Yeah, let's just deal with it. This is all right, isn't it? 
So, the three, you can see three figures in the dim gloom of this flickering light on the other side of the plaza. Uh, like I said, armed with hatchets. Uh, two of them do seem to have like larger, broader kind of axes, um, but the one uh, in the green on the miniature um, seems to have like a, you know, kind of hatchets and small hands. You guys seen Gangs of New York? Yes. <laughs> yeah. They all kind of get in that kind of vibe, right? Like these guys are wearing like clothes and like laborers' outfits, like leather outfits aprons, um, but they've kind of got that rough kind of street gang kind of like look to them. Um, All right. uh, And so the first thing I'm going to ask for, because these guys have absolutely expected you, they've seen you coming, we are going to roll initiative. Hell yeah. I have pre-rolled my initiatives uh, oh, just to speed it up. Uh, Katie, before you, before you roll your dice, oh, no. do you want to take oh, a dice from no. my bag of goodies? I don't think I do, Tom. I, I bought, will. I bought... Tom's bag of chaos. Do you want a D20 from here? I do, but I'm just a load of unhinged dice. I know what these unhinged. Look like. Unhinged. Yeah. Why are they you unhinged? You know dice. Think of them from a different universe. This is a D20. Oh. It's kind of shaped like a D10, but there's 20 <laughs> sides <laughs> to oh, each of them. I you hate this. That? Me too. What's that? I is don't it? know. That's a 13. <laughs> That's 13. Can you just use a normal dice, please? Oh, you're not going to use that one? That is How awesome. can you even read it? You can read it. Can I have a dice to use, Tom? The worst. No, that's the only d20 in here. Wow, OK. No, I hate this. You don't like it? I this is, hate this. This whole bag is filled with this shit. No. Oh, oh God. All right. I hate okay. it. Have this. OK, no, I'll put that back in the bag. <laughs> I'll put that back in. Oh, Tom, why? What is happening? How many others are in here? spent £40 on this. I did. What? <laughs> bag of, this bag of unhinged dice. OK, well, next time you roll a dice, just let me... Just ask if you want to... Can we just limit it to one per episode? OK, well, that's a d20. No, because then this is going to be weeks of this. It's, that's it, quite a lot. There's going to be weeks of it. Don't put it on the map. Get it out of here. <laughs> it's cursed. If you want to see my d20. It's cursed. this way. I want to see it. I want Daisy. To Hi. Okay, oh, fine. sorry. Not that one. Um... Try something new. <laughs> this is hateful. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, 16. 16, initiative for Daisy. Xanthius. 10. 10. Gruffith. 20. Rowan. 8. And Ophelia. 13. It's got soft. 13. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, in that case, uh, Gruffith is going to be our first to act. Like I said, you can see these three figures over here. Uh, they have absolutely seen you. They are making it absolutely clear. One of them, the, the leader in green, uh, will probably look over a human man. He'll just be like, you're in the wrong part of town, Illuminator. <laughs> you know that we don't, want your t- we don't want your guild around here. We've warned you before. Don't make us put threat. Don't make us ask again. Um, and you see the illuminator kind of like looks like. Well, uh, go on. This is what you're being paid for, right? To deal with this. Carpenters, I presume. Yeah. So be it. <laughs> <laughs> so be it. Battle stance. <laughs> yeah. They just look over and be like, "All right, we won't warn you again." And then, yeah, they're very clearly gonna <laughs> come up and try and rough you up. Uh, so yeah, Gruffith. Gruff me up. Um, I would like to cast the spell Entangle! Yep. Uh, on, centred on where the trio are. And what is the radius that we're talking here? Uh, it's 90 foot range and a 20 foot radius. 20 foot radius, so yep, it's going to pretty much hit all three of them. Uh, d- d- does this persist in play? Like, cause I uh, always get confused with Baldur's King now, where it yeah. stays in play. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, point in range, make difficult terrain from plant with plants. A creature in the area <laughs> must succeed on a strength saving throw or be restrained by the entangling plants until the stre- spell ends. Okay, great. So it's concentration and uh, sure. they'll be there until the spell ends. All right, I'm going to try and map it out so I know. So 20 foot, so 20 foot radius, right? Yes. Oh my god, it's massive. Yes. It's huge. 5, 10, 15, 20. So I've maybe over egged this. Wait, sorry, how long does this last? It lasts. Uh, it lasts. That's, that it just, lasts. That's, that's just difficult terrain That's now. just a part of the city yes. now. Yeah. So basically like a circle of like this around here. Wow. Um, all right, and then I'm making saving throws. Saving 
strength saving strength strength saving throws. DC thirteen. <laughs> DC thirteen. All right. The first enforcer, which is going to be the lady, the blonde lady at the front, she succeeds. Ooh. The second enforcer, the blonde haired gentleman, also succeeds, Ooh. unfortunately. Uh, and then the last guild enforcer, the this is the lieutenant, uh, also unfortunately succeeds. On the natural twenty. But that area is difficult terrain, yeah. and they will have to move through it. Uh, but you see, like yeah, from in between the flagstones and the cobblestones, all the weeds begin to grow, and they turn into this swarming mass of plants called forth by uh, Gruffith's powers. Um, but yes, unfortunately, and a, a very lucky DM series of rolls. Boo! You should have used uh, Tom's yeah, weird d I should have done it. Right. Don't forget, I'm going to remind you guys, we'll put these on the uh, yes. as well. Fate. You have three fate. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Remember, you have different ways that you can use them as well. Unfortunately, you can't use it to add to a saving throw. You can use it to attack. Uh, you guys did have cheat sheets. I don't know if you still have them about what you can spend them on. Um, it's in the cubby. Remember, you can use them in interesting ways. Like, if you want to do things like add a piece of cover or, like, yeah. have something happen and stuff like that as well. Uh, I would also like to bend Bonus action, uh, activate my armor of oak and thorn. Yeah, so we see that kind of like natural energy kind of form over you like a, a suit of armor. Um, excellent. All right, anything else, Gruff, on your turn? Any movement? Uh, I will move in front of Teresa. Okay. Do you want a tiny hand? Just like that? Yeah. Okay. All righty. Um, oh, actually, I forgot to get Teresa's initiative as well, actually. Oh, uh, should I? Yes, please. Uh, that's It'll just be her deck mod. Right? Yep. Oh, speedy. 20. All right, we'll just have her go next uh, after Gruff. OK, um, well. So if Gruff is finished. Yes. Since there are three Rothians over by that lamp over there. Three that you can see. Um, the lamp to the west. It makes sense that she would head down to the one to the east. Mm -hmm. um, far away from where they are. Yeah, she will make the point that like I can't start work, I can't start repairing it until you deal with these ruffians. Like I can't start fighting the lamps while I'm distracted. I won't even start working even yeah, on this. She, one. You have to basically fit, yeah. You have to clear these guys out and then she can start uh, working on it. Which is why she has some ability to attack and do other stuff. Okay. So she can help you in the fight. Um, in that case, let's. Uh... Considering that it takes her an hour to repair a light and an hour is like a hundred turns. <laughs> Yeah, it's frustrating. I thought she was going to be out of the combat. No, hmm? it's frustrating. Cantrip. It's 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 her signature it's so attack. <laughs> it's, she can just do that attack all the time. Okay. Um, well, given that you've just <laughs> made the terrain difficult in that area, it makes sense to make it even harder for them to move. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, she'll use a frost ray on um, any of those three, I presume. Just you tell me which one. The one that's furthest to the west. Let's say. Blonde lady. Yes. Blonde lady. Yeah. Um, so that is a plus five to hit. With a d20, that's a 10. So 15. Nope. Oh, a 10 total. <laughs> that is not going to be enough. Okay. Even with the vines around them, they do manage to sort of like uh, kind of dodge to the side uh, as the ray of frost impacts on the, the house behind them. OK. Um, and um, in a spook terror, I presume, she will uh, run 25 feet to kind of get to where the fountain is. OK. Uh, I will do that. I was going to say, can ah! you? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay, and try and take a little bit of cover take from behind cover. it. Yep, absolutely. Yes. Alrighty, after Teresa goes, uh, it is Daisy, I believe, next. Hello. Um, having. See, they're, they've not done anything yet. No, they, they are definitely just... gearing up, ready to come and yeah. fight, though. Because Daisy doesn't like to be the first one to do the violence. I, yeah, because I'm going to also point out something that was kind of you guys actually asked about in the last session. Whether or if you you can choose if you hit them with like a melee attack or something like that to do non-lethal damage, if you just want to knock them out, um, there are types of damage which cannot be used to do non-lethal damage. Yeah. So things like radiant or fire or lightning can't make that non-lethal. What about that finger of death? <laughs> yeah, also <laughs> lethal. Um, things like thunder damage and force damage can be non-lethal, because you can kind of use those concussive force and those out. Um, same with, I'm going to say, piercing weapons. Can't really knock somebody out with a piercing, like a stab of a dagger. Doesn't really knock someone out. Um, slashing weapon, you can use the flat of the blade. But what about psychic? Psychic, I would allow to be... Um, yeah, I'd okay. allow psychic damage yeah. to be non-lethal cool. as well. Um, but just just something to keep in mind. Yes. Like like I said, like and that only matters when it's like they're low on HP as well. Like you know, if they're high on HP and you just want to beat them up, you can do. 
Yeah, but well, we know when they're I'm bloody. So whether or not they're going to try and knock you guys out, you don't know yet. But just as a I was meant to ask, did anyone die in the last group? And I she never said did. that they had had a beating. Yeah. She didn't say. Didn't say, didn't say they were killed. Yeah. Yeah. They were killed. All right. Um, we won't kill. I will move <laughs> around the. Essentially, I want to move the other side of the fountain to where she is. So around here. Five, so just to start spreading us out. 10, 15, 20. Uh, well, I was going to go around this way. Oh, so you're yeah. taking cover. Twenty-five. Well, I'm basically going around. Going to here. the further 30. side of the fountain. And then what? Da- do you want to dash? Yeah. Oh, you want to go over yeah, like I that way? Yeah, I want to go okay. this way. Yeah. So, so that, fun. and then, yeah. You can get about. No. Yeah. Daisy fell off the fountain. Tripped over. So with your movement, you're about there at the moment. Cool. Um, um, don't forget, you can dash as a bonus action and stuff as well. I will hold me action. Okay. And uh, well, actually, I will dash to get just down off of the fountain a little okay. bit yeah, we'll down, like here, down here, uh, just because I'm not doing anything else with that. And I'll hold my action to um, attack them if they attack one of my friends. Okay. So just attack. If somebody tries to attack your friends, you want to attack them, throwing a, a radiant blade. I'm assuming. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay, um, after Daisy's go, um, it would uh, be... So, Ophelia, you're at 13, but also so is the lieutenant, and the lieutenant's going to go first. Um, the lieutenant is going to call out, like, kind of like all these plants, like, ah, Oi, you lot, get in here! And you see, appearing from the alleyway just off where that other light is... Okay, to the east. <laughs> Those in there are going to be moving shortly, Tom, so you might want to move those for me. Okay. Move all those guys together. Five of them? Yep. That's a lot of okay. boys. Um, and uh, seeing as Gruffith is the one cast the spell, how far can they move? 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you know. Yeah, they are basically going to rush um, and surround Xanthius. Oh no! Yep, uh, you're the closest one. <laughs> um, so rushing from the side of an alleyway, I'm. But this, however, this ability from the lieutenant, uh, get in here, uh, yeah. is does uh, cost me a fate point. Mm. So I must spend a fate point, and you guys gain one. Okay. So are they literally like? So they rush, uh, bring in the crew. Sorry, this ability is called like bring in the crew, um, and you watch as these guys rush, and they will. The, the next two will move uh, to get as close to you as possible. So those last two squares, um, and then they are going to perform a group attack. Monsters. Uh, as they basically uh, try and overwhelm and beat the ever-loving crap out of Xanthius. <laughs> My action will go off. Uh, it will go off. Yep. Um, so you get to make your attack first as a response to them starting the attack. So it's three of them fighting me, not all five. So that's not mm-hmm. as bad as it could be, but... Oh, that was close to it. It's a 19 on the dice, so 24. That is going to hit. Um, um, I get sneak attack because they're besides them. I would say that, yeah, they can, they, yeah well, they're within five feet of an ally. I need the total damage here. 11. 11 points of damage. All right. So you watch as uh, this radiant blade, and it is radiant energy, right? The blade's made out of. Yeah. Oh, shit. No. Who's in the name? <laughs> Flies across. Uh, you just react without thinking, Daisy, like that kind of natural instinct of you see your friend, you see Xanthius about to be swarmed by these guys with hatchets and clubs mm. and, you know, beat sticks, and just woof, this blade of light flies out of your hand, embeds into the back of one of these guys. Kills them. Oh. Um, these are minions. Blip. As you watch, uh, the other one kind of like takes a bit of the damage as well as the blade kind of cuts past his mate, um, but doesn't quite finish him off. As you turn around and they, this gang are just like, God, oh, get him! And like, just the group attack uh, uh, becomes more sort of impassioned. We don't want to kill any of you, but she does. <laughs> uh, so. I don't have. I didn't realize they were going to be. I'm not going to rogue. <laughs> uh, so this is going to be a group attack with three of them able to join in. Uh, so they that... are all attacking you. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I uh, it. So the way they work is they basically oh, wow. attack as a group. So they all make one attack basically. That's a 22 to hit. Ugh. 
Is that hit? Yeah. Uh, that okay. is three points of damage, okay. uh, which they are going to make lethal. Uh, they are not going to make this non-lethal because they've uh, one is of that, their number of people. Are they like down. now? Is it obvious that they're now making this lethal because of the, that? this? This pack is right. This group of individuals. Okay. Are, yes. Like you see that one of their companions is laying face down. Um, uh, and yeah, and, but they are like on you, Xanthius. They're like over your body, like they're like pummeling you, punching you, kicking you, stabbing you, oh, uh, as they surround you, basically. Um, uh, and then we go to Ophelia. Ophelia's gonna look at the group of mercenaries that are beating Xanthius. You just go, ah, oh, a feast, how kind. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna oh, rage. No. <laughs> There's no way that she wasn't gonna <laughs> try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I'd like to run up to the group attacking yeah. Xanthius. Yeah. Maybe like spider climb over one of them and like do like a little flip over to get to the back of them. Oh my god. Uh, well, so because there's no wall to run along here, so you would move, say, to like here. So you were here. 5, 10, 15, 20. If you go another space, they will get an opportunity attack. Fair enough. Okay. Really? Yeah, I'll take it. Make a make an acrobatics <laughs> check actually for me. Because if you want to do like a cool flip, oh, or yeah. if you succeed, I'll tell you what though. If you succeed this, you will successfully land there no opportunity attack. Oh. If you fail, you're falling prone in that space. Fake dice. Can I use my inspiration? You can, yeah, but yeah, you can use it now, or you can wait and see what you roll. Remember, it's a re-roll, so you can spend it afterwards. Yeah, I'll spend it afterwards. Yeah, I'll spend it afterwards. <laughs> 16, Six. wait, 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 18. Oh. 18, yeah, so nimbly, like this beautiful pirouette, like a ballerina, just kind of leap and dance and spin through the air, land on the other side of them, blood whip, whoosh, kind of comes lashing out um, as you land amongst them. Hell yeah, and then I'm just gonna whip my whip around, whoosh, whoosh. try and get one of them. Okay. 16. 16 is a hit. Can you make, oh. uh, just roll the full damage for me? Ooh, okay. Because they do have whip. over damage. And I'm going to get extra damage. for rage. Oh, whip, Four, five, six, seven, eight total. Eight points of damage. You wipe one of these guys out. Absolutely. And then yeah. uh, one of the injured ones, the one that Daisy's uh, Radiant Blade sort of passed through and did a little bit of damage to, is also kind of struck by it and sort of staggers a little bit as well as over damage. These minions oh, will take yeah. over damage from weapons and stuff. So. That's cool. Cool. Um, but yeah, so you learn amongst them. Anything else uh, on uh, your that turn? That's bonus turn. move and then action. Yep. All righty. After Ophelia, uh, we then go to, in fact, I'm going to do my little trick for trick who's gone. The next highest initiative is Xanthius. Uh, Xanthius, at the start of your turn, uh, if you start your turn within five feet of three or more of these guild lackeys, uh, your speed is reduced by five feet for each lackey within 15 feet. So currently it's reduced by 15 feet. Is that three? Oh no, you've actually, yeah, one's been oh, killed, yeah, so you've just, got, uh, yeah, 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 but them. within five feet it has to be. So, oh, okay. yeah, so it's only two, um, so 10 feet current reduction. I am still beneath a flurry of fists and clubs and a machete. Um, machete. I want to get these guys done. Um, so I'm going to cast... Uh, oh, I was going to hit Rowan and Ophelia. <sighs> um, I think it's fine. <laughs> wow, wow. I want, they're attacking me and I'm squishy. I want to cast I Earth didn't. Tremor. Okay. Um, so this is... Uh, Rowan is not, please. <laughs> you tell me what happens, Tom. Rowan's fine. It's not a tremor. Um, <laughs> Chris Troy's annoyed. Rowan's fine. I create a... <laughs> yeah. I, it doesn't do a lot of damage. I create a lot of uh, runes and then slam them into the ground to a uh, ten-foot radius. The earth around me um, is tremoring. And uh, they make a... Dexterity saving throw. Alrighty. Uh, I will do this individually for each of the guild lackeys. Uh, the first one. Uh, what's the DC? Oh my god, it's 12. Okay, and dexterity, yeah? <laughs> yeah. You are on a low level, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, first one fails. Second one fails. Oh. Third one fails. Oh. As these are minions, all three. They would only take... Oh, okay. They're minions. And this is bludgeoning damage, so could I... You can make this non-lethal, non-lethal if you wish. Uh, right. So they fall to the ground and... Hit the heads. Um, so yeah, do a dex save first. What have you got for that? And I guess Ophelia as well. Yes, Rowan and Ophelia both need to make this as well. That's already saving for a DC 12. Send that one. <laughs> okay. Uh, 13. 13. 13, so Ophelia, you succeed. Uh, so it's 1d6 bludgeoning for you, Rowan. Six. Wow. Uh, and you're prone. 
Oh, marvellous. That was, that, was good. that was good times. Um, if the ground in that area is loose earth or stone, which it, it is, is, it's yep. cobblestone, um, yeah. then it becomes difficult terrain until cleared. Okay, so basically a 10 foot radius around Xanthius right now is difficult to write. Okay. This sucks for me. Like, I have to get <laughs> out in the middle of the very yeah. centre of this, but... <laughs> sucks for you! He's on the floor! Yeah! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, so you watch, yeah, as, as Xanthius' yeah. palms and runes slam into the ground, yeah, it just kind of... Pff, all I the cobblestones this. leap up. I want it um, to look intimidating. I just took down three of them. It once. knocks out all of these, like, lackeys. They kind of go, oh, stumbling to the ground. Uh, you hear the other Carpenter Guild members just like, oh, they're, they're taking us out! Like, they've got magic! Get in there, you fools! It's barely um, been six seconds! The others are on their way! Uh, as they call out. All right, Xanthius, anything else on your turn? You've still got move action and a bonus action. I yeah, I'll um, use what movement I'm... Can I help Rowan up? No, I've said you use your action. I see. Okay. Um, I will, um, in that case, use my movement speed to just... Now, technically, because you started your turn, you are still technically over one because it's all happening at once. Right. So it's as you're kind of moving. Oh, no, there was only two, wasn't there? Yeah, so it's 10 feet reduction. Okay. So you've got 20 feet of movement left. Um, so you can and... basically get to the outside of your difficult terrain. <laughs> yeah, I can basically get here. Yeah. Two, fit, two tiles forward. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like moving across like broken earth that you've just created. Uh, but then you see these guys go flying and are knocked unconscious. Um, anything else? That's everything. Alrighty, uh, so that is Anthias. We go to Rowan. Ah, great job, Lord Xanthius. Thank you. Also, so sorry. Powerful. So uh, half your movement stand up. I so, will stand up. So fifteen feet. Yep. I assess the battlefield, um, and knowing that they're coming from that direction, I look at Gruff, and I strum a bardic inspiration that streams some energy to you, mm. and you also gain a little. Mode of potential as well, oh. which I'm going to. I think it's your choice whether you want attack, ability check, attack roll, or saving throw. You can use that. Uh, I'm going to use attack roll. Well, you use it when you make an attack. You oh, can spend okay. the bardic inspiration. Have a little spinning oh, on the moat. Head. Yes. Yeah. So you can use it on an attack roll. So I think so it's. it's I think nice. it's like whatever it, the bardic is spent on, you get that yeah. moat effect it's on. The inspiration. Yeah. You get that. All right. Uh, so that was your bonus action. You've moved and half. And I'm going to try and move. So that's ten, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I'll say yes. Yeah, uh, you would. Yeah, you would go back one more because you had to spend half your movement to stand up. So oh, yeah. you only get that extra. And I'm just bit. going to prepare an action with my longsword. If they're within range, I will attack them with my longsword. Okay. All right. Perfect. Just getting it into stance. Yeah. Perfect. All righty. Well, the uh, the two enforcers are basically going to uh, 10, 20, uh, 30, 10, 20, basically get to the edge of the difficult terrain with their full movement. Yeah. Um, and then they're going to spend their action to dash, uh, basically. Okay. Um, and they are going to, uh, going to, yeah, I think they're all going to go this way. I'm not too worried about Daisy. How um, freaking dare you? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, Fair enough. 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 20, 20. So they don't get to anyone just yet. Not yet. Uh, pulling out their hatches, yeah, kind of getting ready. Um, yeah, they, that is literally all they can do, thanks to the, the uh, entangle. That really slowed them down. Yeah. Um, and in fact, that entangle has another effect as well, because you see, coming rushing from one of the alleyway, already another group of guild lackeys were making their way, but their turn is basically spent getting to the edges of this plant growth as oh. well. They have to dash and do the exact same thing. Was this another Separate. kid and boys yeah. situation? This, is, they, this was, they were already on their way. I see. But they, you do see another pack of very similar, like these guys have got like, they don't really have armor, like leather tools. They've got like clubs and sticks and they look a little bit poor. These look like kind of just like street thugs that have been Hired recruited. Thugs. Yeah, basically. Um, Damn. And, yeah, like minions. Minions. And yeah, they come rushing out and they're like, and you see the, the guild lieutenant here just like pointing desperately like, Get them! Um, Get them, boss! Get them! Yeah. I also, I do apologize. Really I forgot to move the lieutenant. Who would have moved? Uh, 5, 10, That's actually, sorry, sorry. You can keep him 10, 20, 30. No, you missed your turn, um, sorry. And then had his action. 5, 10, 20. Oh, he's coming. We'll get there. 
Oh, but yeah, he's like pointing at the rest of you, kind of saying like, "Get him!" Um, but that was—I would have just done his movement. That's all. All right. So that is the end of the first round. We go to round two, starting off with uh, Gruffith. Uh, Teresa, I think, is ahead of. No, I'm going to have you go yeah, first, okay. so, and then Teresa will go second. Uh, I'm going to step up to the leader who is closest to me. Yep, the enforcer. The enforcer. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I do, I will cast Shillelagh. So a green energy passes over all the armor and stuff and everything. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to straight up attack. Okay. Um, I'm going to remind you guys, you do have four fate dice there to be used if you would like to. Why I've got a motor body. Experience. You do have a motor body inspiration. Yeah. That's a bespoke. It is. I rolled a 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29 to hit. 29. Does that hit? 29, 29 will indeed hit. Wow. Um, that is five points of damage. And then also... You need to make a con saving throw. A constitution saving throw for the enforcer. That is an 18. I'm rolling very well on their saving throws. They don't get the thunder damage. Uh, so they don't get thunder damage. Extra thunder That's the damage. extra thing from the Does it do anything on a, on a successful save? No, it doesn't look like no. it. Nope, okay, all right. Well, it still hits, though. Uh, that's, that is all I can do for now. Oh, also, I will gain... I mean, I would like a damage roll from your attack. No, I gave it to you. I said it was oh, five. Five points. I didn't hear you. I was too busy. Rolling saving throws. Uh, five points of damage. Yeah, they surely the club smacks into the enforcer. Uh, they kind of take it on the brunt of their shoulders, still standing though. Uh, and I uh, gain four temp HP from my armor of oak and thorns. Okay. Um, I imagine it kind of just waves of green energy just pulse over Gruff as he, you know, moves, attacks, fights, mm-hmm. all of this good stuff. That is all I can do. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all right. So after Gruffith's go, we have Teresa. Me? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Man, I blanked that real hard. Um, I think, again, um, I need to remember the features. Uh, I'll just try another Frost Ray, but this time at this lieutenant you were talking about. OK. Um, now, the same thing, they are going to have technically cover from Teresa, because she's on opposite kind of like corner. Is this something that like middle section. Five yeah, I mean, if feet. Teresa moves around, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, in that case, yeah, five foot movement just to go in front of little Zan. Um, Big Zan. Sure, Big yeah. Zan. And uh, is that, if that's... Uh, well, I'm, basically, I'm counting that if you draw a line between the two across anywhere across that fountain, it's going to count as cover. Okay. So if she moves to, say, here, that's obviously bringing her in range, then there's no cover. Uh, I would say here, you'll be all right as there, well. Yeah, I'll move ten feet then, but yep. not right next to that. Mm-hmm. Berserker looking guy. Um, and yeah, let's do another Frost Ray. Oh, she's good. She's really good. Eight. This is uh, eight to hit. <laughs> yeah. It's not enough. No. Um, and then. Uh, kind of like an artificer. She's using like, uh, kind of like almost like a rod, like to cast this like rice, but it's like a kind of um, little device. It's okay. I know she's not a fighter. Uh, and then spend 20 feet. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty to get basically even yep. further behind the fountain yep. than she was before. Alrighty, perfect. Uh, so that's going to be the end of Teresa's go. Uh, we then go to uh, Daisy. Hello. Hello. I'm gonna hit one of the. I'm just gonna try and hit the group. The the, the new group over okay. there. The so the same rule's going to apply, basically. If you if your attack basically passes anything from this I'll fountain... So, yeah, you, you could step out 5, 10, out. 15, and, and then, then easy, and then you can uh, duck back. Then I will uh, do it attack. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, you won't get sneak attack on any of these. Yeah. That's fucked. Uh... 19 to hit. 19 will hit. Oh, wow, cool. I rolled a 1, so that's 4 damage. Well, they are minions, so that's enough to take out one, but if this is with a Radiant Blade... I mean, we've already crossed this bridge. I don't have... Yeah, no. Else. We, so. you. Uh, oh, hungry. I mean, that's a failure. You're already getting Our life whole thing is death. May as well. You have so much blood. <laughs> I mean, you would probably hear a, like a voice in your head, which is like better them than us. Like, kind of like you need to, you know, look out for yourself. Kind of just thing. backing him with a stick, you know. Don't 
give me this shit. I don't have anything else. It's either that or I get up in their face and die. Just throw the dagger so that the hilt hits. Yeah, the uh, flat of the blade. No, the, I only rolled a nine on my second attack, so I'm assuming that. That is not enough, I'm unfortunately no. So whoosh, whoosh, these two blades kind of go soaring past. Uh, one does strike true, buries its uh, companion to the ground. Oh, Jim's dead. My brother, my brother Jim. Um, all right. Uh, end of turn for Daisy, which means we go to Ophelia and the Lieutenant. Lieutenant is going to act first, however, um, and the Lieutenant is going to use... Uh, Ruffle. Never. No. no, they won't be using that. Um, I'm going to step in. Um, and they're going to use their uh, uh, guild sweep attack. Um, all creatures in a 15-foot cone, so oh. this is going to be Rowan and Gruffith. I need you to make DC 14 dexterity saving throws, please. Um, oh. Is this a thing that will push pull prone? Uh, this is... Uh, uh, they are the competence guild, so no, it is not. 11 fail. 11 fail for Rowan. Uh, well, uh, sorry, which save was it? Dexterity save. 14 to be... Uh, 8. 14, so you both fail, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are both going to take nine points of slashing damage. Whoa. Um, as this creature kind of, the, the lieutenant of the creature, comes in with like a flurry of swipes kind of moving through you uh, with these two hatchets. Um, you take nine slashing damage, but also gain two bleeding conditions, or two stacks of bleeding. I'm going to use my stubborn endurance, so I... The, the abstract shapes uh, pulse and form a protective layer around Rowan, and I can reduce the damage taken by 1d12 plus 2. Okay. Um, I need to make a concentration saving throw. You do. But I'm being dumb dumb today, so I can't remember. Constitution saving throw. Con- DC is 10 because it's not, the damage wasn't higher than 10. What was the 16. Total? 16, your success on so the entangle is still, still up. up. What was the total damage? Sorry? It was 9 points of damage. Nine. Yeah. So I've reduced that by six. By six. So you still take three. Because you take some of the damage, you still you take the bleeding bleed. conditions. Okay. So the way bleeding condition works, yeah, two stacks of it. Um, the way it works is at the start of your turn, you're going to take D4 damage plus the number of stacks you have of uh, necrotic damage, basically. Um, all right, but we'll get to that on your turns. Uh, that is their action. Um, uh, uh, they, uh, that's it. Uh, that's going to be the end of their turn. Uh, for the lieutenant, so Ophelia. Ophelia would like to run up behind the enforcer. So uh, which one? The guy in green is the, the lieutenant? Guy the lieutenant, even, okay, yes. Nice, yeah. And I would like to uh, reckless bite this boy. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. This is a bonus action, right? Or is this a it's normal? A, it's a normal attack. Normal attack. Okay. Um, so I get advantage. Yes, you do, because you're reckless. And then if it hits, I'd like to use my Crimson Fury and give myself an extra d6 of damage, please. Okay. So 14. 18 to hit. 18 will hit, yeah. Nice. So that's six, seven, eight points of damage total. Eight points of damage to the lieutenant. <laughs> Uh, eight points of damage. Um, and I believe that when you bite someone, you can use Empowered Bite, right, to, like, get a bonus on your next thing or something. Do you want to do that as well? Uh, let's see. If I, can bite. Mm-hmm, I would like mm-hmm. to, yep, yeah, gain a bonus to my next ability or attack roll I make, and that equals the piercing damage of my bite. So that would be six, uh, six bonus to my next attack. Next, so plus six bonus to your next wow. attack. That's massive. Yum. All righty. Uh, so you sink your teeth in, Ophelia, and bite into the exposed neck of this lieutenant. And you, it's not pretty. It's being reckless, it's ferocious. Like you're tearing flesh and just gushes of blood fill your mouth and you drink and drink and drink. And that strength, just like before in Burnell, oh, this, this is the taste you remember. This is the good stuff. And you feel it just pulsing through your body and just bringing that invigoration to you. And yeah, you feel great. She just laughs. <laughs> just feel just laughing with joy. Jesus fucking Christ! She just <laughs> bit me! <laughs> Jesus is here. Uh, and I'm going to use the lieutenant's <laughs> reaction. Uh, don't just stand there. He's like, get her off me! And this enforcer is going to move and he's get to make, gets to make a free attack against you. He gets you. advantage because I'm... He is reckless, yeah. He is reckless, yeah. Holy guacamole. So 
So with advantage, that is going to be a 23 to hit. Oh, yeah. um, so you're going to take uh, six points of slashing damage, and you gain one stack of bleeding as he oh. cuts you with this big ham, this big axe. Sorry. Someone <laughs> you're bleeding. next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so like that, you're now kind of like bleeding. Yeah, it's necrotic Damn. damage though uh, when you take that. But yeah, he like looks at you, and there is almost like a bit of like, what the fuck are we dealing with? <laughs> Um, when he does that. Three, all right. I'm both horrified, but also kind of aroused. <laughs> I had to share that. Uh, oh, right. All right, so after Ophelia, if that's your full turn, anything else you want to do? No, I'm good, thank right, you. Right, in that case, we go to uh, Xanthius. Okay, look, um, I would like to use um, Chaos Bolt. Okay. My, my big boy favorite new spell. Big um, boy. If I set this as force damage. I don't believe you can set it, right? Oh, I you can't have to set pick. it. No, you're right. It also, oh, yeah. I can. Yeah, I do have to roll. You're right. Uh, I would also like to use a sorcery point to twin it. Sure. Um, so I want to hit the lieutenant. Separate attack rolls. Um, I'll hit the lieutenant to begin with, and if I can wang one out against that group at the back. <laughs> wang one out. Um, That's a word. Yeah. So, so you want to send one at the lieutenant, and then you're going to send another one at one of this group here. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so the lieutenant, let's do the lieutenant, lieutenant first. first. So roll uh, the attack or whatever it is. Oh, that is uh, 21. Hits. Um, and that is 2d8. Where are my d8s? Ooh. There. Um, good dig. Okay, bam. A one and a three. Oh, it's either acid or fire. So that's not, that's lethal. Yep. <laughs> what quite do you have quite gruesomely as well. Yeah. What do you have that's not Ooh. lethal? In he, could, he could have rolled like thunder and stuff, oh, I think. Yeah. Like, One out of like... Four psychic and oh, thunder. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe poison? No, that's pretty lethal. <laughs> Maybe... <laughs> Poison's pretty cold? Lethal. No. Okay. Intense well, cold enough to do damage, I'm going to say. It's, it's not high it's not damage, to be fair. Me in winter. So I'm it's gonna... four, but then don't you get to roll a d6 or something as well? Mm, no... When I cast a spell of a second higher, a level second or higher. Oh, is it just 2d8? Okay. Just two, well, it's 2d8. I was first level spell, my guy. Um, so it's four. Uh, four points of damage? Four. Fuck it. Fire damage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so you watch as these flames. Ah, and you just see he like, kind of pulls his arm away um, as you burn him with flames. Um, oh, I should have said it before. I was thinking of empowering it. It's fine. I will do the regular attack, uh, the other Chaos Bolt, against uh, the group okay. at the back. Yep. Um, it's the minions. It's a 17. Hits. Uh, and it is a two and a five, so seven damage of uh, either cold or lightning. Well, it doesn't bounce, cool. right? But that is enough to just. It doesn't bounce. <laughs> you incinerate or burn crisp one of these. It's lightning. It yep. So with lightning, you kind of one blast of fire bursts into the lieutenant. With your other hand, this bolt of lightning blasts one of these uh, lackeys off of their feet, sending their body thrown into the building behind them. <laughs> Just you see the smokering crater in their chest. Hell yeah. And um, because I spent a sorcery point, I get a uh, rune. Nice. So runes form over my body as well. I will let you track that. Uh, Rowan is up next. Um, seeing Xanthius obliterate people and <laughs> Ophelia tear one apart. <laughs> From the neck. Yeah, they are still alive. Both of these individuals, like, you know, they, they are uh, currently up. They're just, like, it's very violent, the action. I've only killed one. It's three, non lethal. It's like um, Batman villain alive, like when he, you know, because he, he's like a non lethal damage. I can't kill them. But, but, I, don't, but I won't have to save you. He'll hit, <laughs> hit someone with a car, but then they land in like. He just breaks every a bone bed. in their body. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, either way, Rowan's going to step up to that aggression. Okay. He's going to point at the lieutenant in front of him and say, okay. You are a carpenter. I prefer masonry. Vicious, uh, <laughs> vicious mockery. Vicious mockery. Oh, that okay. is vicious. Is that wisdom saving throw? That is vicious. His livelihood. Wow. That is scene. Nine. God, failure. Oh, it hurts uh, there. One, three, four. I feel like a part of him was like, you're right, I should have done the other course. Like, Two. You know. <laughs> Two points of damage. You see like a kind of like, Oh, like, what are you talking about? He's like confused, but there's some sort of magic that's hurting his brain. Why didn't you kill me instead? <laughs> what? I don't get it. I don't care what you like. Um, that's what he's been worried about his whole life. That he made the wrong decision. My father was always right. He said I should go to stonework. <laughs> I fucking hate vicious mockery. It's so yeah. dumb. I love this no, I love it. There's no money in carpentry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm in a city of towers. <laughs> Trade out a stone. I'm just putting myself at the front line yep. of the next group. Yeah, you can see that this group is about to rush up. So, anything else on your turn, Rowan? 
Right. All right. Well, our two enforcers have already got their targets. Uh, so Gruffith, uh, she is going to take a swing at you with her her carpenter's hatchet. Uh, that is going to be a eighteen to hit. Uh, it just hits, yeah. Just hits. Uh, I'm out of interest. Sorry. What is your AC? Well, actually, do I know that as a reaction? Seventeen. From um, are you within thirty feet? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, Teresa, uh, as a reaction, when an ally within 30 feet is targeted by an attack, that ally gains 2 AC until the start of the next turn. 19. All right, then that causes it to miss. That is one of those uses done. So Teresa uh, kind of cobbles together like some sort of almost like a little iron band of like series of bars and things like that, sees you about to be hit. It's like, oh, uh, Griffith, and throws this thing. um, And as they're... The hatchet is about to dig into your skin. The metal kind of clamps on and forms like a temporary piece of armor. Bling, and then it collapses and breaks apart. Nice. Um, but she kind of and bounce causes it to bounce off. But you got nineteen until with the bleed. Uh, did you have you have? I had one bleed on my turn. You had one bleed on your turn. Um, then you would have taken uh, if you, just one stack of bleeding. Yeah. Uh, then three points of necrotic damage. Okay. At the start of your turn. Uh, thank you for reminding me. Good, 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 good it's sport. Start of turns, though, isn't it? Start of your turn, yeah. yes. Um, and so that completely deflects that attack. Uh, the other one, the other enforcer is going to attack Ophelia, of which I have advantage because of reckless attack. Oh, I probably should have. Uh, that is going to be a 20 to hit you, oh, Ophelia, yeah. in total. That is six points of slashing damage and another stack of bleeding. So I believe you are up to two now, yes? I'm resistant to slashing. Okay, yeah, that's right, you're raging, so that would be three points of slashing, but you do still take that bleeding condition. Okay, yep, so two two stacks of bleeding. So she does bleed. She does bleed. Does look like Ophelia bleeds slower, like there's not as much blood as there should be, Uh, because you're resistant to necrotic, aren't you? Uh, Let me have a look. It's like Chan. I believe you are, because of your dampier. I think you're resistant to radiant and necrotic. I'll come back to it, but I think you are. If you're not, I'm wrong. Uh, that's their go. Uh, they don't do anything else. They're just making simple attacks. Rowan, these three minions rush you, basically. I'm sorry about what I said. <laughs> <laughs> you will be. Beat him, lads. <laughs> and they're going to make a group attack against you. That is a 25 to hit. Uh, and you're going to take three points of uh, bludgeoning damage. Yeah. Now you've suggested it for everyone. <laughs> they're just beating you. They're like punching you and whacking you with a big stick. And Ow. yeah, Stop it. they got like brass knuckles on. Get him. Mm. Uh. There's another way. No, there's not. You're working for those fucking name liars. We don't want them around here. Beat them up. Uh, <laughs> They're just trying to light the lights, dude. Uh, do you want to make an insight check for me, Daisy? Do I want to make an insight check? Yeah, make an insight check. You just, what, after what you just said. I didn't say dude, just for <laughs> No, that's fine. <laughs> Natural 20. Natural 20. <laughs> You, D- Daisy's kind of watching all of this happen, like a little bit separated from it, kind of throwing his daggers. But like, yeah, like they're being really defensive and aggressive for like what this is. Like, this does seem like a bit extreme that they're going to these lengths. This can't just be about the lamplighters like having some lights here. Um, you're not sure what the deal is, but there's, there's clearly something is it else is going on. Um, we go to the top of a brand new round, uh, and we do start with Gruffith, and I believe you have some bleeding stacks. Double bleedings. All right, so you're going to take three points of necrotic damage. Okay. Um, I am just going to straight up uh, go in for another whack on yes. the lieutenant. The enforcer lieutenant. who's currently in front of you. Yep. Um, so that is a natural one. Uh, yeah, uh, you, I hit my own nose. You go to swing, uh, they just block it and throw you to the side. You kind of stumble a little bit. Um, you you don't look particularly knightly uh, and probably feel a little Aww, bit embarrassed. That's the bro, worst. Natural one. Why Natural drive-by? one. Why the fucking drive by? Natural one, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have consequences. You couldn't look less like a knight right God, now. You look God. real lame. <laughs> uh, whoa, whoa! That was a deep cut. Anything whoa. else? Oh. Did you see what? Oh my god! I was going to send my ice diver to go protect you, but no, I'm not going to do that now. You're out of the action. That was I'm a bit. Send it it was a protect- bit. <laughs> I would like to. I, I, I guess like um, maybe he's trying to summon the, the ice diver as a bonus action. Sure. Um, to send it to protect Rowan, but 
he's so distracted because he's not used to multitasking and, and mm-hmm. like all these things. It's so just, yeah, it like stumbles with the attack. Yeah, and, yeah. he just completely sure. mistimes the attack. Maybe like the ice diver, like the, the glittering like just blinds him a little bit. And he's like, oh, <laughs> and just misses. All right. Well, keep in mind, Rowan. Then yeah, keep in mind that you have that uh, ice yeah. diver protecting Rowan. And that still goes through. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, it's a bonus. It's not a. It's a bonus action for me to send it out. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. So that's the end of your turn, Gruff. Yes. Um, right. I still get four temp HP though from my armor because I didn't attack. You didn't attack. Yes. It doesn't have to hit. I don't believe. Yeah. Um, as long as you get it. Yeah. Um, Pammy. Uh, then we go to Teresa, who is being being played by Tom. Hi. Thank you as for a reminder. reminder. Um, I, I mean, it seems like a frost ray. Will suit once yeah. again. She's very um, simple. Like, she's meant to just be a quick turn, like a uh, yeah, no, that's a cool. little bit. Of extra um, yeah, again against the uh, lieutenant that was is now fighting Ophelia or has mm-hmm. just been bitten by Ophelia. Uh, Nineteen. Nineteen hits. So that is a one d eight plus two of damage. Uh, seven damage, and the uh, speed is reduced by ten feet. Not sure if that matters. You see, yeah, I mean, it will. I mean, it's worth noting. Remind me if I if I forget. But you see the lieutenant, like, as that ice ray kind of encapsulates them and kind of burns them with this, you know, the, the, the frost burn kind of effect as it, like, scorches their legs and freezes parts of it. They are looking pretty beaten up, and they're just like, Ugh. and they're, like, looking around, and you begin to see that they're, they're now looking around like, oh, this is too much. Um... And he looks at the uh, the enforcer next to him, and it's like, oh, we need to. He like begins to sort of like talk to them, like oh, maybe maybe we should go get the others, like you know, but kind of calling out to them sure. and stuff like that. Um, um, they're looking bad. They are bloodied, and they're not looking very handy. And for the rest of her turn, she will run right up to Daisy, who is in the middle but away from everybody, yep. and also nice looking. Yeah, I don't know hey, how to reset, hey. acts, but yeah. Well, it is Daisy's turn next? I'm very cute. Um, Okay, seeing that they're a little bit like, why are they doing this? Can I just, can I stand up on the fountain and just shout to the the lieutenant? And mm-hmm. say, why are you fighting them? It's just some lights. Why don't you just let her fix the lights and then we can all go. Give me a persuasion check, please. Also, can Gruffa, can you run me another concentration check for uh, oh, good time. Time. DC 10. No. All right, so the entangle That's... does fade away. Yeah. 18 plus oh. 2. 18 plus 20. 2 for 20. Unnatural. Unnatural 20. Um, I didn't expect You see that. the lieutenant look up, uh, and he's like, you don't know what you're talking about, girl. This is guild business. <laughs> like, uh, uh, And he's just like, it's not for outsiders, but trust us, we've got good bloody reason. Um, and you can see that there is, there's such anger in their eyes. I'll say that was a free action for you to do, though. I won't say that. I'm not going to make you cost an action to do a bit of cool roleplay. Well, then we're just going to have to keep defending so that we can get the lights back on. I'm sorry. Keep working for your lamplighter masters, mercenary. You're okay. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Can I... Time to die. uh, Go for the ones that are around Rowan. You absolutely can. The lackeys, the guild lackeys. Glackies, they have names, damn it. Do they? Keith. Blacky one. Yeah, but <laughs> minions are always named things like Bob and Jim yeah. and Keith, because I can't think of names for them. 21. 21 is enough. Hits. I do need to know the damage. You do get sneak attack. Okay, so attack is seven, and then sneak attack is five. So seven plus five. Uh, with your modifier and stuff as well? Okay, uh, that is enough to slay the first one. The dagger does pass into this second one and heavily wounds it, but it's not quite enough to take it out as well with the over damage. Um, yep, yeah, bonus action. Uh, 13 plus 5 to hit. Yep, yeah, that will hit. Not that many. Uh, oh, I need a d4. Three. Three. It's enough to finish this one off. There's a minion. Uh, so you watch Rowan as this blade of light streaks past, just cuts the throats of these two guild like <laughs> and they fall to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Rowan doesn't know how to feel. <laughs> uh, I think he's got shock. <laughs> anything else, Daisy, on your turn? No. All right. The lieutenant is going to uh, disengage and make a run for it. Okay. 20, 25, 30. Uh, action to disengage, move. Um, 
Yeah, and that's just going to be it. You can see they're kind of limping their leg. Oh, their movement was reduced. By 10 feet, that's right. So they are only going to go to there. So they're kind of limping away like, ah, you lot, keep them busy, I'll go get the others, um, as they begin fleeing. Uh, Ophelia. You know... This big, kind of like burly looking, um, uh, probably, uh, maybe, yeah, human, probably, just like big, you know, heavy looking carpenter is staring down, trying big to block car. your way. Mm, lots of blood. A lot of body to pulse blood through. Yeah. yeah. Mm, mm. I shall bite him as I promised him he would be next. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to forfeit a promise. Uh, uh, 12. Oh, oh, yeah, you could fate it. Oh. Or you could use your inspiration to re-roll. Remember, you, fate has to be done before you yeah. roll. What about you your plus, plus six? six. From, oh, that's right, you do have your plus six. six. Well, I remembered, yes. 9, 10, 11, 12, yeah. so that'd be 18. 18 hits. Yeah! Bite the boy, bite the boy, bite the boy. Bite, bite the, the boy, boy, bite the boy. Bite that boy for me. Bite that boy Ooh, for me. Six. Is that with your rage Seven, as well? Eight. So that's eight total. Eight points of damage. I'm going to regain those eight points back as health. So you're going to spend nice. another empowered bite? Yep. Okay. Uh, so again, you sink in. Oh, this is so good. Just it. Just memories of being back in Osseus. That refined <laughs> flavor. He's got a little feeling. Just warmth trickling down your throat, filling your stomach and your body. You miss this. Mm. Yeah? Yeah. And just, as you can see, I'm like, oh, get, get off me, what are you doing? Oh. Nah, I'm staying on, bud. I'm staying okay. on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> nah. Um, I'm staying on. Did you, you have some stacks of bleeding, though, don't you? I have two stacks. All right, in that case, you would have taken three necrotic damage. Three necrotic. No problem at all. Alrighty. Um, anything else on your turn, Ophelia? Um, that is me good, thank you. In that case, we go to Xanthius. Um, I, uh, this guy looks, this lieutenant who's running away, he looks real messy. Oh yeah, he's like limping, you can um, see that he's heavily beaten up. I want to send a shard of psychic energy into this dude's brain with a mind sliver. Wow. Okay. Um, which is psychic damage. Mm -hmm. um, they must pass an intelligence saving throw. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't think that's going to be enough, even with a decent bonus, that is only going to be an 11. Needs 12. There you go. It will take close. Not a lot of damage, but I'm hoping um, he's low enough. Uh, so a D6, four, four. You watch as the lieutenant kind of stumbles as this strange power, like you kind of lance into his mind with your own magic, and he stumbles but doesn't go down. Okay. Um, and the next uh, saving throw uh, is minus one d4. Um, okay. Um, I am actually gonna ha I'm gonna use his reaction of don't just stand there as he kind of feels the lance and looks at you kind of you know weaving your hands yeah. and cast a spell. He's like, oh, and he, the one that Ophelia is currently latched onto, which I'm gonna rule in a minute. He's like, don't just stand there, the mage. Um, can you make an athletics check for me, Ophelia? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Trying to push you off. Yeah. <laughs> Not one. That one, <laughs> you are just thrown off of him. I'm not going to make you go prone, but you don't go with him um, because he gets to move uh, 15 feet without provoking an opportunity attack. So he is going to slide to here, uh, and then he makes a free attack against Xanthius. Okay. That is a natural one, however, so I'm going to miss. Nice. I bet he doesn't look very knightly right now. No, he does not. No, he doesn't look very knightly a at all. What an idiot. Um, but he does try and swing at you, and you manage to dodge to the side. Yeah. Um, so that was your turn, Xanthius. Anything else? Uh, bop, bop, bop. <laughs> All right, in that case, we go to Rowan. Rowan's going to grab this lackey next to him. Okay. By the scruff. I'm sorry. I can't let other people get hurt. And I'm going to lob him at the lieutenant. Okay. Whoa. He's pretty That's big. He's a big dice. All right, okay. Um, I'm going to say, make a athletics check for me. Yep, yep, yep. yep. Um, does he get any bonus for being freaking huge? Well, I, I'm going to say that he can attempt this because of that. Okay. He's not going to get a bonus. Yeah. Like a normal size unless you have like a really high strength. You're throwing him, what, 15 feet, 10 feet? About 10 feet. Six as well? Yeah. I'm going to say that you need, before you tell me the result, I'm going to say you need a 20 to even throw him the distance. Oh. oh. 15. 15. 
I'll, ch I'll say a 15 to throw him, but the damage is going to be less. It's, it's like you're hit, it's say. like barreling into his legs. Yeah. Like he hits the ground and then goes rolling. Um, I will make a acrobatics check for the guild guy. Uh, he is going to kind of tuck and roll. Um, roll just a d6 for me. One. One. <laughs> Technically, he is a minion. <laughs> so this guy is knocked out, um, but he collides into this guy, um, and I'm just going to say it knocks him prone. So, like, this guy goes unconscious, this guy kind of falls on top of him as the two of them are sent sprawling to the ground. Okay. And um, using that, I'm just going to use my movement to get in front. Ten. Yeah. Fifteen. Twenty. Please stop. Uh, yeah, you can see the guy's like trying to disentangle himself, this like is not beaten necessary. and bloody. Um, and you can just say, like, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, alrighty. Uh, as you do that. I'm uh, willing to have a dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Uh, not with you, not with a lackey of the, li the lamplighters. Uh, uh, the enforcers are going to go, they're going to continue their actions. Uh, they're going to make an attack against you, Xanthius, and an attack against Gruff. The... Oh, the one that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the one that moved up. Uh, to attack you, Xanthus, is a 13. Uh, that d does hit. Is that still with the ability, like the uh, Teresa's ability? What? To protect you? It was only it was one on you. thing. It was on you. Oh, is there only one? Ability? No, there's three uses of it, yeah, but it is like, a reaction it has to use. But that would put me to 13, which... I I'm also going to tell you, like, this is not one fight and done. Like, you've got three of these lights to face. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. Um, um, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, yeah, just... Just take the hit? Yeah. All right, uh, and then against Gruff, uh, that is a, yeah, that's 22, unfortunately, against Gruff. That's gonna hit a little bit. So you're both gonna take six points of slashing damage. Okay. And you gain a stack of bleeding. If I rune, runic sorcery block this, a Glyph of Vegas, yep. uh, does that stop the bleeding? If you reduce the damage to zero. Okay, I roll a d6, so that's four. So I take two damage. You take two, but you still do gain the stack of bleeding. Okay. Um, alrighty. Uh, that is both of the enforcers goes. Um, yeah, Rowan, give me a insight check because you were kind of talking to this how guy. Much do I bleed? Sorry. Oh, how much do you bleed? Who? One stack. How many? One, stack. One, two points of necrotic damage. Insight six. <laughs> Just don't. Yeah, this, I mean, you just get the Nine. impression. This guy, he's a horrible man. What a nasty man. A just full of, man. yeah, he's a bad man. He's a bad man. Why are you so bad? <laughs> uh, all of the minions are now knocked out, so that is there go done, um, and we go to the top of a brand new combat round with Gruffith. Um, this lady is kind of just like yeah, shows no uh, sign of giving up anytime soon. Uh. I was just wondering whether or not Groff would bother trying to talk to them or just still keep whacking. You would have heard. Yeah, I would have heard. Um, what is your quarrel with the Lamplighters Guild? Uh, the woman will say... She's kind of a low-level enforcer. She'll say... Uh, <laughs> that guild has been bleeding us dry and now they're up to something and we're not having any part of it. We don't want them controlling our part of the city. And if you work for them, that means you're against us. So you just want to live in darkness around here without the lights? <laughs> what, you think the Lamplighters Guild own light, own fire? That's what they want you to think. But we're against it. Big lamp. Got damn big lamp. I knew oh, it. Damn, we got fired. Yeah, we got hired by. The we got hired by big lamp. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got hired by big lamp. <laughs> we should have worked for big wood. <sighs> <sighs> Little wood though. <laughs> Little wood. Yeah. It's really Mate, Martin. It's Martin. Yeah. <laughs> He's the guild leader. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, if you ever guessed. Hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Carpenters Guild. We just made your character for you, Martin. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, what are you doing, Gruff? I'm whacking. Sure. Uh, hey, remember, you can like, you can always be like, yeah, I'm gonna make this non-lethal. Doesn't really matter. 17 to hit. Anymore. 17 will hit. Eight points of Dimaggio. Eight points of Dimaggio to the lady. That's a pretty big hit, um, and it does bloody Ooh. her, in fact. Uh, oh. So you kind of clock her around the face with your magical staff. Pfft, uh, spits blood. Pfft, uh, uh, I knew it. Um, all right. Maybe we could talk this out. <laughs> As he just whacked her. Whack. <laughs> Yeah, sounds good. Uh, um, can I please take some bleeding damage, please? Yes, of course, yes. After I have turn. three stacks. Oh, five points of necrotic damage to you, I'm afraid. Oh, dear. Bugger. Yeah. Bugger. 
Anything else on your turn, Gruffin? That's it. That's my all she's got. Yep. He's all right. Got, Teresa. Got, one has got. Don't forget to get your temporary hit points again yeah. as well. Yep. Nice. Teresa. Um, yeah, she only has ice magic, which is lethal. Would she kill? No, she would try and not to kill. So she would probably target somebody who does not look at that close to death. So okay. the enforcer probably fighting you. Um, Santhius. Uh, soften that one up. Yeah, she, she's she's basically seeing it as like yeah, she's trying to soften them up and slow them down and yeah, yeah. Um, unless I've missed something, I'm, there isn't much. Like, no, no, no. That's just her signature attack. She doesn't really have. She doesn't have like weapons. She has like a little hammer, but 19. She, she could make a melee attack, and I just improv it. Nineteen more hit. Um, so it is a D8 D8 plus two. two. Ten. <laughs> Ten points of damage. So with that, this little tiny halfling lady like sees the one attacking you. Like, do you big brute? your hands off of him <laughs> and you just see his back is encased in ice oh, oh maybe a bit too strong um, and she kind of like waggles does, her stick it around kill? Uh, it does not kill him no but badly wounds him that blood ice cold so fresh she wants it warm though uh, oh, no, no, it's like a that we summer. go to yeah. Daisy hello um, I'm going to hit the one mm, actually so is that one that Rowan knocked over? Is he still the the lieutenant is still technically conscious? He was not prone, but he looks so beaten up. Can I like, just go over to him and like hit yeah, him with the? the yeah, I mean, I would say you, if you want to make an attack with the dagger, but we'll not rule it as like you kicking him. Yeah, kind like, of. Just we'll, do we'll just make it so it does a little bit less damage. I might, I, I'll take a little bit of damage off or something like that. But yeah, you basically run down from the fountain. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. <laughs> like Where's running down. <laughs> <laughs> give I him. can't let you go get anyone else. <laughs> and just kick him. Yep, you give him a swift <laughs> kick. Yeah, yeah. Just make, give me, uh, give me an attack as if it was with your dagger. Your normal <laughs> mundane dagger. <laughs> and I rolled a nineteen, so twenty-four. Twenty-four oh hits. God. All right. Okay. Was the it D four? Two. Two points of damage with sneak attack because Rowan's there. Oh yeah. Oh, uh, but uh, okay. Their uh, sneak attack could be non-lethal. Uh, uh, with my dagger, actually. Uh, so, it's uh, yeah, Because I'm going to reduce it a bit because it's technically an armor strike. Oh, okay, yeah. He's not it's dead. 11. He is out cold. Boot to the head. <laughs> Just his eyes roll back, knocked unconscious. Um, he asked for it. He was going to get more people. Uh, when no. you reduce the guild enforcer to, when you reduce the lieutenant, sorry, to zero hit points, even though it's unconscious, like not not lethal, yeah. uh, their guild loyalty trait's going to come into effect, and the next um, member of the same guild who makes an attack has advantage. So the two enforcers see you knock out their their friend, and they're like, oh, they knocked out Steve. <laughs> like they, 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 the they, they kind of get empowered, like, oh, we we got, we got to fight, like you know, even though they're badly hurt as well. No one kicks the boss in there. Nobody hit. kicks the boss like that except <laughs> me. Um, and, ex and, and it was just a tiny little girl. Yeah, it's a tiny little girl. <laughs> so, anything else on your turn, Daisy? Uh, no, I'm good. Thank you. All right, Lieutenant <laughs> is knocked unconscious. Um, Ophelia is next. <laughs> Ice cold, mm, tasty blood. Yes, she's um, going to go and, uh, yeah, bite the enforcer. I love how you're like, weapons? No, no, no. <laughs> it's all bites now. All bites today. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. You've All been right. telling her for like the past few sessions how thirsty she is. Yeah. So I mean Oh I know. Ten. Ten? Mm. Would you like to do any, do you want to spend your inspiration to re-roll or do you want to keep that? Uh, she she spent it. it. Oh, did you spend your inspiration, did you? Um, all right, in that case, no, a 10 is not enough. You can see, like, he's got, like, a thick leather tunic and your teeth just don't quite puncture through and he pulls his arm away, not giving you any kind of purchase as you try and bite him. Mm. Was that reckless as well? That wasn't reckless. That wasn't was reckless, okay. no. All right, okay, all right, yeah, no, you just unfortunately are unable to find purchase. And also bleeding, see play? Oh, yes. I have two stacks. Uh, so that would be four necrotic damage. Necrotic. Wonderful. Um, so after them, the lieutenant goes. Xanthius. Um, I mean, this guy's looking still pretty strong, right? No, no. The, no? Both of the enforcers are now beyond. They're bloodied. Um, yeah, it's just the I lady wanna... looks the least uh, affected. Um, ranged spells that have a saving throw. If I'm right next to them, does it have dis? Does nope, they have like advantage? No, no, no. I think I'll do the same again. Mine Mine's on on this guy. Yeah. Well, this is. Um, uh, they do not look particularly intelligent. Uh, but I did roll a 14. 
Nah, all right. In that case, it does, I believe. I think it's a cantrip. It does nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. So you try and lance into his mind with magic, but whatever sort of aggression has built and seeing their friend go down, uh, they are unaffected by your spell. Okay, that's fine. I don't really want Do to move away from them. Stacks? I have one. You take ooh, four points in a crop. Oh. Ooh. Nice. Anything else, Anthea, on your turn? Oh, uh, that is. Um, yeah, that's me. I don't want to really move and get Rowan. him to attack me. Rowan is going to make a two zeros with his hands like this. Infinity symbol. The infinity symbol. And then his hands are going to glow and it's going to create some manacles because with performance of creation. Okay. Mm. And I'm going to... Does that use like a bionic inspiration? Uh, no, it's just one of Just you can use it as features. can you use it as many times as you want, or is it limited? No, I've got okay. one per long rest. Okay, so this is your one use. This is my one use. Yeah, so you create a pair of manacles. <laughs> clink, clink. I'm going to clink yeah, it. Put it oh. behind his back and... I didn't make a key. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> make a key. Um, so yeah, you just put this pair of manacles on the guy. Clink. They just become like steel, actual... Steel manacles. I believe as long as it doesn't go beyond a certain it's size. Medium size is yeah. my limit. And, like and I think, I think there's a cost the limit, so these are like you're, iron manacles. They're not like made of gold. Yeah, yeah. Right? You're no, questioning no. the manacles, yet he made a full on mattress, mattress yeah, and that's surfed true. it. Oh, like, yeah, 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 no, you're right. Yeah. I think yeah, the great. manacles are a bit less. Super creative, mm, uh, clever idea. Right. Anything else, Rowan, in your set? As long as it's not over 60 gold pieces worth of value. I'd say the manacles, probably close, that's like 50, but yeah, that's just good. All right. Lots Anything else? Flowers. Um, I'm just going to sit him up, right? Okay. Call your men off. Ah, uh, he's unconscious. Oh. <laughs> I kicked him. I'll wait. <laughs> Strip um, the two enforcers who are left um, are going to. Uh, Basically, they are going to disengage and try and escape as well. Sure. Like, they are both looking pretty hurt, um, and they're they're not. They're like oh. So five, they are disengaging, so no attack opportunity. Five, ten. And they're going the same way as 20, 20, the lieutenant 30. was going. Yeah. Cool. Uh, this one's actually going to dash the other way. So he's going to go past trees at five. 20, 25, 30. Yeah. So they start running for it. Um, that's just going to be their whole turn. Uh, bam. Uh, okay. We go to the top of the round. Gruffith. Uh, to start with, bleed me. Bleed me. Three. Three bleeds. Six points in a crotic. Um, and then I'm going to pursue after the lady who's run okay. away from me. I have 35 foot movement. You can movement. catch her easy. Uh, if you want to talk, we can talk. I got nothing to say to you. <laughs> Stooge. Uh, 14 plus. Five hits is a nine. Team. Uh, six points of damage. Six points of damage. Non-lethal. Yep. She is looking very rough, but is just still conscious. Um, that's all I've got. Alrighty. Uh, from Gruffith, we go to Teresa. That's you, Tom. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Fuck me. What is wrong with me? Um, I mean, this guy. She doesn't want to kill. But, uh, she, so I'd say that, like, basically, she can make a plus two attack with her hammer. So she'll have a plus two to the hit, and it All will right. do a d4 minus one. As he's running past? <laughs> yeah, she just moves up and tries to clonk him on the head. 14. <laughs> it's... Yeah. Yeah. How much damage is Actually, no, he's an enforcer. It's a, it's a miss. His AC is high. Uh, all right. Uh, Swing and a miss. So, no, you brute! <laughs> <laughs> Come back here! Um, technically move up to him. <laughs> yeah, well, sure, yeah. I'll uh, take that. All right. Uh, after Teresa, Daisy. Can I... How are they... Is he, this one looking injured, did you say? Uh, the lady. The lady. Yeah, she's looking nearly close to passing out as well. This one, kicking. over here. Uh, oh, this one. This this is the chap. Uh, he is also pretty close to passing out. Okay. Can I run? They're both looking bad. Can I run over there? And um, 15, 20, I'll dash if I have to. Yeah, you can. If you dash, you can get there. And can I try and uh, like knock them out as well? Yeah. So because this guy's not prone, I say this would be an unarmed strike because you're going to try and punch. Because with I a dagger, and, there's like, not really like even with the pommel. Somehow. Yeah, I'd say that you can either try to like make an you can make an unarmed strength to try and damage him. And keep in mind you will get sneak attack because Teresa's yeah. there. Fake um, dice. Or you can do to trip him up would be an athletics check opposed by his athletics. I'll try an unarmed strike. Okay. 
Do you want to add a? Yep. I will yes. add one to myself. Cool. Um. I see. I'm not adding one to the roll. I'm just ooh, putting it in my pool. It's not that great. Uh, Eighteen. Eighteen hits. So this is one damage plus your 2d6 plus strength. <laughs> well, I don't have a strength. All right, so it's just one plus 2d6. Eight. <laughs> uh, I imagine that, you know, what would this be for Daisy? Is this like a kick in the balls? Is this a, like a clothesline as she goes running past? Yeah, I'll like. Yeah, I think it's going to be, it's less of a uh, punch because she knows she's yeah. not very good at that. So but, she'll, like, little she'll girl try kicking and, like, the nuts. <laughs> yeah, she'll do something really, like... Like, I imagine that actually he's turning, like, seeing Teresa, who he sees as maybe, like, a weaker kind of foe, he looks like he's about to, like, try and, like, butt slam the butt of his axe in, in Teresa's face, which gives you an opening of just, yeah, as this little healed boot comes up. <laughs> oh! Clean. <laughs> Down he goes. One left. One left. I know normally you can't apply sneak attack damage to like an arm strike, but I'm allowing it. Just so I people, will look people are like, it's not a finesse weapon. I'm allowing it. I will look over at Rowan and just go. <laughs> <laughs> I would say a swift kick in the balls is finesse. Uh, it depends on the boot. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm arguing. A finesse um, boot. Yeah. So uh, the last one to go is, uh, the next one to go is, well, the lieutenant's gone. Ophelia is the next one. So who is the lady? Just this the lady, lady here, right oh, by yeah. the alleyway. I will so run up five, behind her. 10, 15, 20, 25, oh. 30, 35. To about 10 feet. You are within whip range. Perfect, then I shall Ooh. whip her in the legs what? and try and trip her over. Okay, yeah, I'd say that you can use this to try and do non-lethal. I think a whip is normally piercing, but I'm going to say with this use of it, you're basically making mm. a non-lethal attack. Nice, sure. nice, nice, nice. Or can I reckless for advantage? You can, yeah. So Ooh. when the other one went down, she would have gained the same thing of gaining advantage on an attack but she's not had a turn yet, so. Okay. Uh, 15 is my highest. 15 does not hit, unfortunately. Her AC is 16. How did you read that? Are you still uh, raging? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Rage doesn't add to the attack roll. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you go to whip, but the whip just cracks into the stone of the house nearby. She, like, ducks under it in a panic, desperately trying to run away at this point. Um, yeah, unfortunately. Uh, anything else, Ophelia, on your turn? Uh, no, that's me done. Thank then you. it is Xanthius. Um, I am just going to, if, if again, I get to cantrip, it's free. Uh, yeah. It's non lethal. Uh, another mind slither. All right. Uh, intelligence, um, yes. Intelligence save from That is them. a failure. Visions of red and gold and fire and fury. One damage. One. Psychic damage. Her, kind of her eyes flutter and she shakes her head, still barely conscious. Ah! Ah! Two hit points left. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay because it's Rowan next. Oh, big boy. If, if you hit her, she will probably go down. If you don't, she goes next, I'm going to disengage, and if she gets to the edge of the map, you lose her in the alleyways. I'm just going to go and bear hug her from the back. Are you trying to grapple? grapple. Or you... Okay, all right, give me... So this is going to be athletics um, uh, uh, versus her athletics. She does look quite strong, you know, being a laborer, she's got some muscles on her. you got a fake dice on her? I've got a fake dice. Yeah. Oh, bleed damage, oh. Bleed. bleed Oh, yeah, how much bleed do I get? Uh, well, you take... How many stacks do you have? Two, three points of necrotic. And then for Rowan, how many stacks do you have? One. Three points of necrotic. And I also have one as well. Do you want a fake dice drop? Just roll a dice. I'm going to roll it here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my I'll God! Why? I've rolled the max. Oh, I don't want it. Uh, blood. So you're using a fake dice. <laughs> He's not yes. good. I'm going to use a fake dice, which means both of them are permanently removed from the pool. Oh, uh, well, that's right. Well, cool. permanently. Cool. Well, I was thinking of allowing this fate pool to remain because this for the battle. Well, but when you say permanently, you don't mean. No, not permanently. For, and for this, yeah. until we roll a new pool of it. Yeah. Uh, so I get to add a d6, you get to add a d6, and this is an a opposed athletics I'm check. I'm going to inspire myself with bardic inspiration. You can do that. You can do this, Rowan. <laughs> Crush the lady's skull. <laughs> No. <laughs> no inside voice, no. Hug the lady tight. <laughs> yes. Hug, hug, hug the lady, hug the lady <laughs> now. Hug <laughs> the shit. Five plus three is eight. 
A. Uh, I got a 14, 9, 1, plus 4, 14. Please so you stop. go and grab her. <laughs> and Just stop running. Well, you can see that this is clearly like a labor, a woman. Like, she's got bulging muscles, and she just uh, flexes you off, shoves oh. you. Um, stop it. <laughs> and that is going to be the end of your turn, because bonus I move and, yeah. and action, I believe. And on her turn, she is going to disengage. No. And she runs Maybe. off and escapes into the alleyways. Oh, wow. um, and that is... Somewhat <laughs> um, as she flees, those who have been knocked unconscious, or in some cases killed, um, the you guys are out of combat now. Okay. Uh, Teresa will look and say, "Oh, oh right. Well, I'm I'm sure that there will be more, but I think that we've at least it will take them some time to gather their friends and." You know, re-equip and things like that. So, I'm going to start. Which which lantern would you like me to work on now? Um, oh, uh, uh, this one to the this way. This oh, oh, one. That that one in the corner. Sure. Uh, very good. Um, uh, perhaps uh, if there's anything you want to do over the next hour, you can. You guys can take a short rest. Oh, okay. uh, that's nice. Um, bleeding conditions, by the way. Um, so uh, the way this would work is. Uh, technically, we would have to stay in initiative just until this gets fixed because, uh, yeah, you guys might fall unconscious from the bleeding. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> as at this rate, that, I will. that last person falls, um, it would go into a new round. So, Gruff, you have bleeding, right? Three. Three. Uh, you take four points of necrotic. You have three stacks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you got four. Uh, I have Rowan. one and I got, like, nine. <laughs> uh, Ophelia, how many do you have? Two. Two. Uh, five points from Necrotic. Um, then we go to Xanthius. One. What did I get? Three. <laughs> Rowan, uh, how many do you have? Two? Just one. Three. I'm going to use Stubborn Endurance because I'm on one HP. Oh my god. I am going to roll. You can't Stubborn Endurance this because it is from a bleeding wound. It's not an impact. Rowan bleeds out. <laughs> all right. So you fall unconscious. Um, that will remove all of your stacks of bleeding, I would say. As you fall unconscious. I'm not going to, because otherwise you're going to be like failing more death saving throws and stuff like that. I'm not going to worry too much about that. What's the um, blood around, Rowan? Bleedy blood, blood. Don't. Bleedy, bleed, bleed. What, what are you guys doing in your turn? Well, basically, you have a, a round of free turns here. Like, who's doing what? Um, Rowan falls unconscious. Bonk. I will use cure wounds on Rowan. Okay. Level one, one D8 plus three. I need you to roll that amount of healing, please. Six plus three. Six plus three, nice. so nine. Um, so you gain nine hit points. Now that you've healed somebody, uh, every five hit points of healing you do removes one stack of bleeding, right? You can also um, use a, if any of you have a, a healer's kit uh, in your inventory, you can use a use of it to patch up uh, wounds. You can like bandage wounds, basically. Um, otherwise, you can attempt to make a medicine check with like, kind of like improvised bandages, but you'll be at disadvantage. Okay, okay. Um, okay. Who here is bleeding? So you're completely free now, aren't you, Rowan? Because yeah. you only had Gruff the one. So you kind of, place. your eyes flutter uh, to a thing. That was on your turn, so Gruff's done that on his turn. What's an, anybody else doing? Um, so I, Before Rowan wakes up, this is like why you're unconscious. Yeah, I've done this before. I want to use the Produce Flame cantrip. And because I'm a gold dragonborn, I've got the resistance to fire. I almost want to... Okay, yeah, I would say... Be a medicine check. I would say make a medicine check, uh, no disadvantage, but you are then going to take the fire damage, or half the fire damage. Okay, yeah, I mean... It's D8, right, for Produce Flame? Yeah, I've done yeah. this before. Yeah. That's I want to Dragon Ball. So, so give me a medicine check. Uh, da, 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 plus one. Now, the gamble here is if you fail... Natural 20. Natural 20. In that case, I would say that you can use the fire so skillfully, you don't actually burn yourself with it. Like, you kind of in focus the fire into a finger and... Nice. And just like seal that wound. And then I turn around and, and use my breath weapon on Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's what Xanthius was yeah. doing. Gruff's on it. So Ophelia or Daisy, do you two want to do anything, try and stop this bleeding or do anything? I'm not bleeding. No. Okay. So you're just, gonna, um, like, just nod and look I, Oh, no. Oh, for, for other people? I, I'll do a medicine check, but that's all I can do. Sure. Yeah. So, so medicine, do medicine check with disadvantage. Who do you want to help, Gruff or uh, Ophelia? I'll help Gruff because okay. Ophelia scares me and there's blood and she, I don't feel like it's mm. a safe space. Um, <laughs> I don't feel like it's safe. Very Run a little bit longer just to kind of wrap uh, this little bit up. Eight. 
with disadvantage as well. So, <laughs> uh, so you kind of like manage to tear some like strips of fabric out of like you know a bandage or maybe your like blanket or something like that, and you're trying to wrap Groff's wounds, but you're like, oh, what do I do? <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know. Sorry, Groff. Sorry, sorry. And his fur's sorry. all matted. Um, well, all right. At least you're trying. Ophelia, anything you want to try and do? Yeah, I think same should, thing. Yeah, same thing. She was trying to go around all the like couple of the dead bodies, ripping fabric off. Yeah, yeah, it's off these guys. Yeah, you can do it off those guys. Do you want to try and do it on yourself or on Gruff? On myself. All right, so medicine check disadvantage, please. DC is 10. 15. 15. You managed to, so that's one stack of bleeding you remove. Nice. So you've got two, fabric, right? Yeah. You also like scrunch them to get, get all the blood out of it. <laughs> so you've got rid of your bleeding now, haven't you? Yeah, mine's gone. All right, so it's just Gruff and Ophelia who have it. So Gruff, the next round you would take uh, four necrotic. And, and Ophelia, you would take three. Okay. It's funny because all the like the temp HP is just taking it because I cast yeah. a spell. Yeah. So I got four. So yeah. you're just like nice. it's almost like the primal energy that you're able to manifest is constantly knitting those wounds, but then they're opening again and it's holding them closed. Then it's opening again and kind of doing that constantly. Um, all right. So you have got a fresh round of turn. What what are people doing? Like making more checks? Do you want to heal? Special. Who's doing what? Rowan. Oh, healing word. Gruff. Okay, roll the healing because it does need to be five or more to remove a stack. Yeah, yeah. And it does also heal hit points as well. You would you regain the hit points as normal. Okay, cool. So it's just D4. You can see how if it like stacks up, it takes quite a long time to try and get rid of, like. Yeah. There you are. Uh, five. Five points oh. just enough. So you get five hit points back and one stack of bleeding goes away. Yay. Is that you? How many on now? Two. Uh, so I am going to cast Cure Wounds on myself at level 2, which is 2d8. 2d8. Can I then try and bandage well, it? Might be able to get rid of it all. Four, five, Andy. six, seven points. Not enough. Gets rid of one, um, and then you can try the bandages, uh, Daisy, for a medicine check. Disadvantage? Yep, with disadvantage, yeah, you're using improvised healers kit, basically. Ooh. Um, DC 10. Yeah, 13. 13. 14. All right. So with that, like with your own healing graph and Amazing. Rowan's healing and Daisy bandaging you, maybe kind of showing Daisy what to do a bit more. <laughs> like you're able sorry, to... Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm panicking. That's why. Slow it down. Slow it down. Slow it down. <laughs> She's we shaking. we have Xanthius and Ophelia left. What are you guys doing? I'm done. All right. So Ophelia, do you want to just try and bandage yourself? Yep, 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 yep. yep. Five. Five. It's going to be another round, unfortunately. You got one stack remaining. Yeah? Yep. Five necrotic. I'm like, you can just see, like, Ophelia's wounds are just still bleeding. <laughs> like, she's like trying to wrap them up, but it's just pouring out of her. I'm like holding a ball of flame. Does anybody need any healing? <laughs> <laughs> I can. After no. it, I've already had one this round, but I could try and help Ophelia when I finish. I help, can uh, help healing her. word. Sure. I mean, you can also just try medicine check if people want to try medicine check. No, I'll, I'll healing word. And if anybody doesn't have a healer's kit, if you have fate dice, maybe you could rummage around in some of these crates, or maybe you can just search in these crates, see if there's any healer's kits around. I just want that extra. <laughs> healing word. Yeah, have right, sure. fate left. Has to be a minimum of 5 HP. <laughs> yep. 4. 4 HP. Um, you so you still get the HP back. Okay, cool. But that wound has not closed up. Like the healing was not enough to fully close up the wound. Try medicine check sure. again. Disadvantage. Mm. No, it's the same. So that's it's like these scraps of clothing. Like the the guys oh, that you captured, you've like stripped like these strong. dudes who have like been captured. You've like ripped all their trousers off. Their shirts <laughs> are completely gone. Why would it stop? Oh. Just getting splattered with blood. Yeah. Uh, cure wounds level one. Okay. Oh, God. Yeah, spin. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Spend. Right. Oh, that's two. You would have got rid of two, but there's only one. Spend all your spell slots. Use oh, them. Me. <laughs> so eventually, you. you guys managed to stop all these bleeding. Like, it's been not even a, really a minute at this point, but you've managed oh, to gosh. stop it. We've used so much resource. <laughs> oh, it was the artery on the thigh that was. Yeah, is that one? Oh, <laughs> we found it. Um, you it's see. Really hard to tell. Teresa <laughs> makes her way over to the light that you've picked. If you can move her over there for yes. me, Tom. Um, and yeah, begins to tinker away. Like she like has like a little folding ladder set that she sets up, and she goes up and she starts tinkering with it. There's a mixture of like casting spells, but also physically interacting with the device and kind of looking into like some sort of crystal, you know, thing that's wedged into the lantern. Um, and she begins casting all these spells. Sometimes pulling out diagrams that she seems to be following um, and things like that. Uh, it is going to take her an hour. You may take a short rest. Ooh, hell yeah. Um, if you don't take a short rest, you can interact with the environment and this space. 
If, for example, you wanted to search some of these crates and barrels around, if you want to do anything else you guys can think of, um, I will tell you, your the foes will keep coming back, mm -hmm. right? They're going to probably keep sending people, but it's going to take them time to come back and think. They will always enter from this point on this alleyway, this alleyway, this alleyway, or this alleyway. The exact opposite from the light we just repaired. <laughs> yes, okay. but that's where they're going to be coming yeah. from. It's dark. I guess, um, and the light. Oh, maybe. Here. Yes, also, as the hour goes on, this battlefield is going to get darker and darker, and those of you who cannot see in the dark, which is everybody but Ophelia, fighting in these areas is going to become trickier as you're going to have limited vision, okay. all right? Same for them. I've got yeah. the light here. Um, we will do all the short rest stuff off stream. Yeah. I will leave it on one point, which is after this long rest, after about an hour, you see a few more shapes beginning to emerge, but this time... The figures that you see are not armed with hatchets and curved lathes and things like that. They are instead armed with what appear to be blacksmith's tools, blacksmith's hammers, as members of the blacksmith's guild... <laughs> are you kidding? ...begin to appear uh, emerging... He's got a crossbow? I'll put him up here instead. Uh, yes. Uh, from the alleyways. Can we... Well, you said off-stream, so... Oh, what, the short rest? I, I wanted to spend my time building some, um, like, pushing some... Yeah, you, are you not going to spend a short rest healing or anything like that? Because uh, if you do do spend a short rest healing, you don't get to do anything in the environment. Yeah, yeah. so I can't... I, just for a druid, it's a long rest to... To get spells spell back. Spells. Yes. Yeah, so, but you can spend um, hit dice to gain hit points and stuff like that. It's okay. All right, I, okay. I would like to um, block off one of the alleyways. Sure, let's, let's, let's determine that now, then. Um, which one would you like to block off? The one where you just push men out? These guys? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> So, like, you basically, you would move the cart, probably. Yeah. It's, like, oh, the easy... Put this here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, bloody hell. I'll probably spend my turn searching for stuff. Yeah, so you will we'll pick around. Anyway. I'm going to still put this guy up here, because yeah. he can get to the ladder from this alleyway okay. back here. But these three are going to have to come in over here instead. Um, so they're going to be a little bit further away. Does T fix the light? She does. Cool. Magical. But we will go more into that next episode. Uh, it does not light up. I'm sorry, oh. Thomas. I'm sorry. I don't have LED columns. Um, so that sucks. But with that, uh, the uh, the matter of guild politics, episode eleven, guild politics, uh, is comes to an end uh, with you guys continuing uh, to defend Teresa as she fixes it. I told you it's going to be, you know... I didn't think the black for a while. going to get involved now. <laughs> well, if you remember, Alicia Tempio did mention that there was some beef between the Carpenters and the Blacksmiths. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you will recall to the episode. If the Masons show up, I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it seems to be that, yes, you fought off the Carpenters Guild for now, um, but now the Blacksmiths Guild have come from the other side of the city oh. to get in. They are nastier. Uh, well, you don't know if they're nastier, but they've got hammers. Uh, they do seem a bit better armoured. Um, but yes, uh, we will find out what happens in the next episode of High Rolls, yeah. Fire of the Dragon Empire. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. <laughs> hello, hello. Apologies for running a little bit later. I just wanted to wrap up that little bit of encounter there. Uh, before we try and quickly read through any messages, I know people have got to go, but big thank you to our sponsors for today's episode. Woo! It's Roll and Play Woo! Press with One Shot Wonders, this awesome book of over a hundred adventures uh, decorated, done in a very cool style of like one or two page uh, briefs that have uh, all the information you need to run an adventure and none of the stuff that you don't need. Mm. Uh, just boils it down into everything that you want and need. Um, and also, uh, you can get a 10% code off their website Website using Alfea the code Alfea10 at roll and pray roll and play press.com forward slash wonder. Uh, so you can go and check that out as well. And they have their Kickstarter with the amazing map library going on as well. Uh, so you can go and check that out as well. Uh, wonderful. There will well be done. links in Twitch chat, YouTube chat, YouTube uh, dis uh, description. Everywhere. Links everywhere. Click that. Check it out. Go Thank look you. at it. Go look at it right now. Gim. Um, uh, all right. And then if we can try and quickly rattle through these, because we did go a little bit later. Yeah. And Here's I know my gross dice, by the way, if you want to do a little zoom in on I one. hate it. It's yeah. awful. That's my D20 that I bought the other day. Um, for donations, 
Um, we had a donation from Hypnodia that says, Happy late birthday to Charmer Trotimus and legendary DM Mark Humes. Um, Thank you very much. I have a question for you all. Any Thank thoughts on coming to this year's Luca Comics and Games in Italy? Uh, well, Kim and I went there a few years ago, and it, Luca is a gorgeous city. I, I would love to go back to Luca and eat all the delicious food, but unfortunately there are no plans for it this year. Uh, if we get invited to stuff, but we haven't been invited, so... Yeah. We'll announce it in uh, episodes as and when we go. You should come things. to Insomnia Gaming seventy two and meet us there. Yeah, yeah. Fly uh, in. You come to us. Birmingham Airport's <laughs> right there. Yeah, it's actually it's convenient. connected fully. It's very connected. Uh, Vexa Healer two thousand eight. Gong Hei Fat Choi. Wow, that's the Cantonese pronunciation. Oh. Is, that, is that? I thought he was correct? just doing it wrong. No, because it's Cantonese. There's Mandarin. I do oh. Mandarin. Okay. Uh, have some money for the endless hours of entertainment you guys have given me. Uh, you guys are my favourite D and D stream. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Thank you. Yeah. Kung Hei, yeah, with a K, right? Like, oh. yeah, yeah. That's Kanto. Um, Interesting. Keishi, thank you for your bits. Nightjar, happy belated birthday to Trot and Mark, and Xinyan Kuale. Xinyan Kuala. Quote, yeah. It's another greeting. Uh, or happy new year to you all. Guess I'll be it's seeing y'all in I, Birmingham. It's cute. It's very cute. Um, Thank you, Nigel. It's Thank getting you. better Thank as you. well. Yeah. Every year it's getting better. I'll get you a brain blanket like I did and go. Uh. Um, Jacob Chickpea, happy birthday, Mark. Uh, thanks for all the inspiration, awesome storytelling, funny character voices, and great role play and DM advice. I am three sessions away from finishing the first campaign I'm DMing, and I believe your influence has helped it go so well. Thank you very much. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Slay Jovi, uh, I apologize for not donating more. I am but a mere university student. Ah, Do not worry. Uh, good, you also don't have to. Hi, guys. I discovered you money. through uh, the BG3 game oh. and have been an avid fan ever since. Thank Aww. you very much for sticking Thank with you. us. You've become so, so, so incredibly dear to me in such a short time. Much love from Slovenia. Aww. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's always great to hear people that came in from Baldur's Gate 3 and stuck around. Yeah. Um, love hearing that. Crispy with a half hundo. Oh, thank you, Crispy. Uh, adored fantasy Garak this week. Um, Mark played him Garak. perfectly. Oh. Garak. Garak. The tailor. Uh, spelled like Garak. <laughs> um, Mark played him perfectly. Very creepy. Love the suggestion that he knows something about Xanthius' oh. family. So very intriguing. Oh, yeah. Can't Garak wait to favorite. know more. Um, <laughs> Happy birthday to Mark and happy Lunar New Year to everyone. Thank you. Uh, Thank and then you. another uh, thousand points in bits from Crispy. Oh, um, nice. You may have noticed that MK is away this week, but he left this message for you all. Here we go. Here we go. Saddle up. I do more than tell simple jokes. I make science puns too, but only periodically. Very uh, nice. Go to chuckle at me. Go to chuckle at me. Crispy ends that one with, really I'm really sorry. <laughs> Are you though? Um, ba -ba -ba. Anti Dragon Althea movement. Here we go. Oh, here we go. go. Dear Rollers, it has come to our attention that you will soon be meeting with the vile lizard Ignarius. We trust that you will do the right thing and put the blade to the beast's throat. <laughs> Can you just imagine that in the it's middle of up. public audience? I would love to see you try. Best wishes. Level three characters yeah, yeah. versus <laughs> hero of the war to Dignarius. Immediately. Uh, best see all like wishes. 17 red dragon just <laughs> Well. Anti dragon Althea movement. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Worrying movement that is brewing in Althea. <laughs> I mean, I love this idea because, like, yeah, it's a kind of cool yeah. idea. Like, that there's this movie. Someone's going to fight against it. They would it. need to find some way of fighting the dragons yeah. because they are. Dragons. dragons. <laughs> it's like I have like four hundred hit yeah. points and I can breathe yeah. fire for like and a they've million. They've seen damage. it all before. <laughs> like, yeah, they've been around. There's a reason that they are in power. Yeah. Uh, I'll put it that way. Uh, Bandai Nenzai with a quarter hundo. Thank you, Thank Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Uh, loving Althea. Love you guys. Happy birth, Mark. Love you too. Thank you I very much. Um, Heinebold. Finally, I'm live! Last week I'd already caught up, but the mental health of a friend was more important than catching oh, the stream. Yes. Hey, yes. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you, High Rollers, for repeatedly, uh, repeatedly addressing these topics. Yeah, yeah no of course. Yep. It's very important. It uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I haven't got Discord or anything. Kim, we have, you have YouTube donations, starting with Jared, who says, so the reason I'm still on older rowers is you don't put this out fast enough. I'm on my third one today. Hopefully wow. Smeek comes back to haunt Xanthius someday. 
Still, love the content. Caught up this week and still will be watching live. Hello, Darren. Don't worry. Hello. That's my favourite part about Alpha. Thank ending. you. Alpha, no rowers. <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> hey, guys, I just want to say thank you. I've uh, been watching a long time, but you kept me smiling. You keep me smiling uh, and laughing, even in the worst of times. I know it's not much. The blurst of times? Do. The blurst of times. You're stupid lucky. You're stupid lucky. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Thank you to Galdir, who says, it is definitely a great idea to give the vampi vampiric barbarian a crisis of faith and nothing bad can ever come of it. Once again, I want to make the point, that was a completely random draw. I did not set that deck up. I shuffled it and it was a genuine reaction and I think the perfect uh, mm. damn good. Uh, draw. Uh, we also had YouTube gift memberships from Colin. 20 gift Thank memberships. Thank you very which much. Pretty, pretty heck it. Thank you very uh, much. And a raid from Gillian Fox Club. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank you all. Um... He loves this bag of chaos. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys all so much. Once again, thank you to our sponsor, Roll and Play so Press. Uh, do come and meet us at Insomnia72. Happy Lunar New Year. And thank you all very and much. Happy for birthday, Marty Birthday, Marty! Happy, 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 happy Year of the Dragon! Happy Year of the Dragon! Year of the, year of the Dragon! Dragon Empire! Hey! <laughs> Bye! Bye See ya! So, 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 yeah.